and interference with the integrity of our forests at bay. Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kindike says he'll work with leaders in Kericho and Kisumu counties to resolve the conflict that has been witnessed in the Sondu area. Appearing before Senate, Kindike said that in the next two weeks he'll ensure that peace is restored among residents and political leaders. I was in Sondu incognito and uh, I agree with Senator Muma. It's a serious matter but it can be resolved. It is not really complicated and, and therefore going forward in the next two weeks I'll be requesting the leaders from the two counties to help us. By that time we'll have known who to invite and who not to invite. Thank you. Kindiki further revealed that police officers who'd been at one station for more than three years will be transferred, failure to which their salaries would be stopped. It has now been decided that going forward, no officer who has served for more than three years should remain in the station they are serving. The signal went out two weeks ago, the day when the task force on police reforms presented their progress report to the president. And now it's part of the policy reforms that we have initiated and we are expecting we have given the police command a maximum of 60 days to make sure that all officers countrywide who have stayed for more than three years must be transferred. Deputy President Rugadi Gashago has urged the Maasai community to promote the education of the girls for the development of the country and the region. Gashago said that the government recognizes that feeding the girl child is the same as building society. Kwa hivyo ningetaka kuuliza nyinyi muweke BD kwa mambo ya masomo na hasa huyu mtoto wa kike tumuangalie na county commissioner na machifu wako mkuu wa angalifu muhakikishe ya kwamba wasichana wetu wote wameenda shule kusoma na mkuu wa angalifu kwa sababu hiyo ndio kujenga jamii na ndio kujenga taifa Gashago added that the government will implement development projects in all areas of the country regardless of political affiliations Hii shule yetu ya Kishemorok Boys Secondary School na hii primary serikali yetu kwa gharama ya shilingi zaidi ya milioni kumi tutachiba borehole ya hizi shule mbili na hiyo borehole pia itumike kupatia majirani wote maji katika sehemu hii kwa sababu sisi tumefika hapa na tukifika hapa lazima tulete maendeleo na sisi tuko hapa katika siara maendeleo siasa imekwisha si ndio kwa hivyo borehole tutachimba na itakuwa namna hiyo Gashako's statement comes just a few days after he claimed that major positions in the government will be allocated only to people who voted for the Kenya Kwanzaa government in large numbers in the last election. Now, UK's King Charles III and his wife Queen Camilla will make a four-day state visit to Kenya later this month. Buckingham Palace says they'll be in the country to celebrate 60 years of independence from Britain. This is His Majesty's first visit to a Commonwealth country since their inauguration. Highlights of the program will include a ceremonial welcome at State House and bilateral meetings between the King and the President and the Queen and the First Lady. Together, their Majesties will visit a new museum dedicated to Kenya's history and will lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown warrior at Uhuru Gardens, as well as visiting the site of the Declaration of Kenya's Independence in 1963. This is Newsworm, Dennis Aseto. Good morning. One hundred two point five Spice FM, Kisumu. The following takes place from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every weekday on Spice FM. Congratulations. <laughs> You've seen the hand of the Lord. Thank you very much. I've earned another title today this morning at Spice <laughs> FM. Mama Justice, I don't mind it. Joel in Kericho. Salama sana heri, kapari asuji. Salama buwana, mambo na mna gani? Salama Dr. Bro. Mambo ya inamoi kuliandaje? Mambo ya inamoi, gini ni kwandia ndugu yangu, alienda asubui na hile kari ya kwana. I must have missed it. So did I. Even if somebody wants to render you irrelevant, there is still work you can do. Okay, 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 sawa. I deserve to keep you accountable. You deserve to give me a report. You don't work for me. Uh, no, I don't work for you. You work for me. <laughs> Do you like that Freudian slip? <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? Thank you very much. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation.
Good morning, and I love your show. Thank you. Thank you. Having come from Bakikuyu radio background, I migrated to Spice <laughs> because of the content. I was born in a slum, but somehow I got a break in life. So sometimes when you see the sweating coming out because of the passion and whatever it is, <laughs> <laughs> behind the noise, there are people. And we share the same umbilical cord. It shouldn't be like that. I am so disappointed. We used to tell Honda uh, Boraila Molotinga that he's doing police of conmanship. And even President Uhuru Kenyatta, Sirikali, he is doing conmanship. You cannot promise people that you reduce tax, then you double. In politics, mm. there is uh, the issue of trust. Mm. For you to turn around and then stab the same people who gave you that trust, there is no other level of dishonesty. And I utaona dunia tu. The Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation. All right, getting into a day before the end of the week. And what are we looking at this morning? Still nothing popping out in terms of traffic. It's still very early and we'll probably see this uh, build up later. That's guaranteed. Uh, you're fine on the thicker superhighway coming through into the city and um, clear free through to the CBD coming out of off of rather Huru Highway and this is from the Nyaya Stadium roundabout I think you'll be all right for now uh, not much in terms of traffic popping up anywhere on Manyanja Road we'll see some movement it's going to touch on to Jago Road at some point where we'll see a build-up of traffic getting through towards Landis and then out towards Kamkunji at the roundabout and we're all right on Mombasa Road all the way through and through we're going to keep an eye on things and see how Thursday morning pans out talk to us in the meantime on Spice FM KE on X let's keep things moving this Thursday morning This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. The uh -huh. It's nine minutes after six on this lovely 12th day of October 2023. How you doing? Happy Thursday. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation, Ndu. Yes. Otherwise? Otherwise? Mm. Otherwise, young ni mzuri sana. Mm. Mm. Very good. Unajaribu. Unajaribu? Mm. Ata sese pia tunajaribu. Chana nilishiku na fever buwana. How are you feeling today? Eh. Don't know what was happening. Hachu. Fever. Fever. Hachu. Fever. Fever. The ancestors were talking to me. Did you go and rest? Well. <laughs> yes. Ish. You didn't go and rest. <laughs> Clever African. <laughs> and you wonder why it is you're feeling unwell. And I'm chezo tu na chezo na ayo. Rest. Nida wakubwa. I'm chezo tu na chezo na ayo. Chezo na nini? But how are you feeling this morning? Uh, well, I'm alright, I think. You know. A spring in my step. Okay. okay. I'm better. I'm better. No, truly. Okay. Do you know that song? Achoo. Fever, fever. No. Achoo. Okay, yeah, 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 we're good now. Yeah, 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 we're good. Come on, Julia, to Julia Leo. To Julia Leo. I have no idea what you speak of. Eh? Mm -mm. Don't worry, Edna will sort you out shortly. Just now. Mm. Otherwise, you're going to go to the city, Kwaji? I'm going to go to the Baba. Eh? Uh -huh. Mimi Igumar Daddy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. How Palestine and the war has divided Africa? Africa is not divided. <laughs> Africa is not divided. Eh? It is that one. It's that one by Habib. Mm. Habib Namanga. <laughs> yeah, ow, ow. You could call Copandani. Someone I chase you. Oh, boys, hot. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, man, eh? You were not joking. There's actually huh? a song. Yes. <laughs> mm, okay. Well, I wasn't sneezing yesterday. Mm-hmm. My body was just doing a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. That's exactly what that song is saying. Look how is looking at you me. You saw somebody. <laughs> Moyo Nadunda. Kichwa cha Oma. Dado kipito. Moyo. Dunda. Dunda. Moyo Nadunda. Kichwa cha Oma. Kichwa cha Oma. Dado kipito. Yeah, yeah, nani Oma. Mambo iko like that. Mm-hmm. Mambo iko namna that. Thank you, thank you. Sawa. So, uh, All right. Na wewe uko salama? Mimi niko poa pia. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's Thursday. It's Justice Thursday. We are going to have a Justice Thursday conversation at 7 a.m. Review of the Penal and Criminal Procedure Codes to align the 2010 Constitution. Sawa. So, uh, so, so, uh, we'll be joined by two people. One of them is the chairperson of the uh, National Council on Administration of Justice. Committee on Criminal Justice Reforms the honorable lady justice Grace Ngenye and we, a judge of the court of appeal and the honorable wakili Edward Moreo who is the MP4 Gatanga and a member of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee of the National Assembly those two join us at 7 a.m. for that conversation review of the penal and criminal procedure codes to align the 2010 constitution 13 years Later. after promulgation of the mm. constitution 8 a.m. so there's been this talk of you know rigiji um saying you know what eh? all the leopards and tigers and hyenas and all these other animals and human beings of mount kenya are going to unite and speak in one voice, voice. uh What does that mean? One of the people who has been saying yes, yes, yes actually this is a good thing to do is Gunjiri Wambogo, the former member of parliament for Nyeri Town. He will join us at 8 a.m. to talk about Gashagwa, Uhuru and Mount Kenya Unity Talks. Where is it heading? And then at 9 a.m. there is a senator called Karongo Watangwa. This is a senator for Kembu County. He has drafted a bill and uh, he wants this bill to be discussed and debated and then adopted by Kenya the public holidays amendment bill 2023 among the things he says if a public holiday falls on a tuesday <laughs> okay mm. let the monday also be a holiday he maneno bana eti you come to work on monday then you break tuesday <sighs> no if it's monday then tuesday also be a holiday then come back on wednesday yes okay so now if the we... public holiday see like now this year mm. we just had moi day and uh, no mashuda no what's it called tamaduni day that one mm-hmm. on mm. tuesday on tuesday yeah so like yesterday we should have also been on holiday no oh, monday. monday before you see it comes after a weekend right so there's a monday and then there is a public holiday on tuesday so yeah. he says have a long weekend proper Okay. So like in May when there's usually Labor Day and then there is usually uh, a a Muslim holiday you find yourself not coming to work at all. Well, if they fall on Tuesdays. Usually yeah. so if it falls May Day like last year, mm. May Day was on a Monday. No, the year before that. Um um Labor Day was on a Monday. Labor Day was a Monday. Right. Then there was Eid Al-Adha. Mm-hmm. There was of uh, the following day. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't last year, sorry. It was the year before that. <laughs> and then there was, was another public holiday on the 2nd of May. Yes. Uh-huh. And then So already that one you already celebrated the two holidays, one, didn't you? Well, so now what they're saying is essentially then also because then the Friday before that, I believe it was when uh, former president Kibaki passed. Mm-hmm. So there was Friday was a public holiday declared because of the funeral yeah. and then Monday was Labor Day yeah. and then Eid al-Adha was on Tuesday yeah. so what he's saying is now Wednesday no we come back no 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 mm. please don't conflate issues i'm just asking how will if the like? public holiday falls on a Tuesday and there's a Monday in between mm. weekend and public holiday make that Monday also now but if, what if it's the Monday Wednesday, is a public holiday I'm asking. that's fine we'll just continue like that yeah, yeah. Oh, you okay. see Monday is not affected it's a public holiday already If it comes in the middle of the week at the public holidays on a Wednesday that's fine. You okay. just continue. Yeah, you just continue. The thing is mm. don't have this break break somewhere. But let get Karongo Adanga come at 9 a.m. and tell us what exactly he's talking about. Yeah? The thinking behind it and let's discuss and debate. I think it's a good conversation to have.
they will talk about productivity and all but yeah 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 it's okay let's have the conversation anyway are people productive on that monday are people anyway. productive on monday period <laughs> <laughs> well let's ask a more pertinent question uh. were we at work on monday mm -hmm. yes were we at work on tuesday yes mm. so you what? see us guys are different city we are in what we call essential services <laughs> you know i was going somewhere with this uh. the public service so let's talk about people at immigration no i was going to go to petrol attendants those ones are also essential, essential services. services they work 24 hours All right so now let's hospitals okay so let's redefine essential services let's go to those guys i've told you about immigration immigration are they passport, essential services passport guys no they're public servants they're public, they're public officers why are they not essential eh? how do we define essential that's where i'm actually going with this <laughs> Wacha tuchukue break. Utauliza, utauliza karongo hiyo swali. Okay. Mm. 17 minutes after 6 we are live streaming the show online on YouTube and Facebook. If you're online this lovely Thursday morning, say hello, let us know where you're tuned in from. Ndu will tell us about the weather and then we'll acknowledge your presence. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Sixteen degrees, cloudy conditions in Nairobi. We'll see highs of twenty-five and lows of fourteen. Thirteen will be the low in a clear Nakuru at fourteen, going to highs of twenty-five. Twenty-six will be the high. It in Nyeri. It's clear at fifteen, and we'll see lows of fifteen as well. It's cloudy at four, at fifteen in Eldoret. Highs of twenty-four and lows of thirteen. Looking into a mostly clear Mombasa at twenty-three. We'll see highs of thirty, and thirty-one will be the high in a partly sunny Malindi at twenty-five. It's cloudy at twenty in Kisumu with highs of twenty-eight and lows of nineteen, and at eighteen it's cloudy in Kakamega with highs of twenty-seven and lows of 16. Cloudy at 19 in Kampala, highs of 25 and lows of 18 and Dar es Salaam is cloudy at 24 with highs of 29 and lows of 24. It's partly cloudy at 14 in Johannesburg with highs of 23 and lows of 13 and Lagos is cloudy at 26 with highs of 31. Mostly clear at 24 in Kinshasa with highs of 32 and Dar es Salaam is cloudy I beg your pardon and looking into Beijing is cloudy at 17 with highs of 19 a Thursday afternoon. Rainy morning in Paris at 18 with highs of 23 and lows of 17 and it's cloudy at 16 in London. It'll go to highs of 17 today. Wednesday night is clear in New York at 14. We'll see highs of 21 and lows of 10. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Mazuka Bwanji CT, Eric and Ndu, the bag. Yes, the bag, CT. We say Chikwama. Yes, CT, your bag. Hello? A bag is called Chikwama. Yeah, Ch CT's bag is called Chikwama. Yes, CT. Okay. There's Locasa something. and Bongo. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> he says there's something missing. Eric, where is bottom up? Is it in CT Chikwama? Mm. Eric, keep them honest, please. Who's them? Bottom up. Keep the bottoms up honest. <laughs> you know this, man. <laughs> Why are we discussing bottoms early in the morning? I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, in your bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, sure. This could go south real quick. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> Vivian Adala <laughs> says, good morning, CT Ndu and Eric. Greetings from Port Portal in Uganda. Mm -hmm. James Sekento is tuning in this morning from Kerarapon and says, good morning. Let's pray for peace in Gaza. Hmm. Mm. H. Mwangi uh, says, greetings from Down Under. Eric, take over the singing from Ndu. Ta Let me tell you guys something. I'm not trying to zhuzh up my name. My name is actually Ndu. It's not Nduko. It's not Nduta. My name is Ndu. If somebody wants to call you Nduko. And it's no. not Ondu either. It's not Ondu, it's not Ndu, it's not Onda. And it's not Ndu. It's not understand. It's yes. Ndu. <laughs> I'm not trying to sex it up. It's actually Ndu. People say, yeah, it's make okay. it sound good, Nduta. No. Mwangi wants to call you Nduta. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It doesn't quite if work. If Mwangi so. wants to call you Nduta, <laughs> let Mwangi call you Nduta. <laughs> Yeah, to him, it's an endearment. Really? He has some things about Nduta. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Agri Momani says, good morning. Have a great Thursday. Kesho City, with your permission, allow me to take you to Tanzania. You want to go to Tanzania tomorrow? Agri wants to take you. 
Robert says, we, 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 we. Okay, cool. Uh, greetings, kings and queens. Kitengelo Ikalokt, that's Ricardo. Deep State says, can we ban makeup? Some people are unrecognizable with makeup. This is like impersonation. It's true. Lilian Atiano, good morning from my, from my favorite three. El Nino Imeanza Kisumu. It rained cats and dogs. Whoa. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Robert Tobogo says, good morning. Kesh Danny says, welcome to Africa's biggest conversation, Allah. Ndu, your voice is soothing always. Sing again, Zita. Shingo Yopanga. Yes. Imo yo wimbo bana kilogo. Apana bana, endelea ndu. Salimia the wise man, Zita. Mwenye nini? Uh, and City the Guru. Yeah, we'll play that song. Ngoja, you watch a Malize Kwangalia kitu. Eri, you're very chatty since you came back. You're a very happy man, isn't it? Sasa yunawana. Kwa ni kulienda aje? Sasa yunawana bana. Eric was happy before he left. Eric was even happy last year. He's sprinkling, sprinkling happiness. Irene Aziz says, good morning, Spice team here at Sun and Sand, ready to be spiced up, getting you loud and clear. Mm. Team Kubwa, good morning. Linda Gola is asking, Eric, I'm a smoke, Nini. What is going on? <laughs> hey, hey. Nini, Nini, Buana. Nini, Nini. Hello? <laughs> Can you not just be happy? Mm. You banner. Surely. Let's be happy. Yeah. Good morning, Spice team. Ndu, Eric, and the wise man from the Lake Region. Headmaster CT Muga, salute you. <laughs> You've been saluted. Alrighty. <laughs> Jimmy Rekesa tuned in this morning as well. Why, Remo, greetings, my people from the Bay Area in California. Yes, Nemo, we see you. Good morning. Carly Omondi says, tuned in from Tel Aviv in Embakasi. There's a place like that. Nisawa, too. <laughs> Always a pleasure listening to you guys. Um, Denver Venvik says, Dr. Venvik rather says, good morning from Tuda in Mombasa. Uh, kindly, even if it falls on a Friday, then make Saturday to be a holiday. Mm. Okay, Sawa. Living us on Nogu, I see you, brother. Says good morning. Tuned in from Nakuru, Nigerian brother in Nakuru. All right. Um, Mwangi says, Okay, do let him sing Naskia Sauti. You want to be sung for Naskia Sauti? Naftali Kaganjo says, Good morning. Tuned in from Kahawa West. Somebody else from Kahawa West, Sakawa Sukari, rather. Kelvin Kaburo is tuned in this morning. And Rico says, good morning all the way from New Delhi in India. Happy Thursday. We see all of you. Karibuni sana. Thanks Everybody for joining us. Everybody. City. Mm-hmm. To Peleke Pale. City. To Bado to go Tanzania. As uh, Edna sets up the Jamhuri Jazz Band. Jamhuri Jazz Band. Basi. Yes, 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 yes. Uh -huh. The bitterness of a son is known by the parents. Mm-hmm. The bitterness of a son. Of a son. Yes, is known by the parents. Son ya mutoto. Si le ya nini? Si ya jua. Mutoto. His own bitterness that he feels or their bitterness that they feel as a result of his behavior. Okay. Pole pole. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. The bitterness of a son uh, is known by the parents. Uh -huh. uh, the son is the one who has bitterness. Who has the bitterness. And that manifestation of that bitterness uh, will be known by the parents. parents. Yes. They are the ones who know the origin. They are the ones who know the cause of the sons of their son's bitterness. Mm. <laughs> Not that they are bitter because he has caused them. Okay, so I have got it. And of course, what is the manifestation of mm -hmm. that bitterness mm -hmm. will also cause them grief. No. 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 As a Mwenye mwendo wa maringo na hatua za hesabu. Sasa yule nini? Calculated steps zile wajua. Mjue na kupenda wala kamwe sitakwaja. 
<laughs> <laughs> being serenaded by her. Oh, this friend. woman there? Eh? Okay. Yes. There's no way she will not agree. After all of this singing for her. Yeah, I want to jam Huri Jazz Band. Really? Mm. That's the stuff, man. No ma. <laughs> <laughs> no ma. Very good. Headlines? Ah yeah. The handshake fears is what's on the front page of the standard this morning. And the question is, the Bomas talks are at a penultimate stage and Kenyans are anxiously waiting for the team's recommendations. Will there be a closing of ranks between the two political formations? And if so, what next and what does it mean for allies of both President William Ruto and ASMIO leader Raila Odinga? We'll look into that. CT, your brother and sister are coming. The king and queen of Britain, Great Britain and Ireland, will are set to visit Kenya. Britain's King Charles III <laughs> set to visit the country. We saw this hmm? yesterday, announced by well, the uh, British you, High Commission. You, know, you really must, where, well, Nani, if you're going to announce, announce properly. Mm. King Charles III mm. and Queen Camilla. I'm, yeah. I'm very sorry, please. please uh, and Queen again. Camilla. Sorry. Yeah. His Royal Majesty, <laughs> King Charles III and Queen Camilla, will make a royal state visit to former colony Kenya. Thank you. Bas. Very good. Sindio. Yeah. First to a Commonwealth country. Indeed. Mm, since the coronation. Since the coronation. And the reason is because mm. Kenya is the country where Queen Elizabeth was crowned, but actually named Queen at mm -hmm. the demise of her father in 1952. You're doing very well. Thank you very much. We're <clears throat> really local. Bas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Marching orders for 23 forest officers as Ruto does what? Kacha! Cracks the whip. President Ruto presides over the passing out parade of Kenya Forest Service recruits at the NYS Gilgil grounds yesterday. He said the government would take necessary steps to protect the environment and ensure good officers have a, an opportunity to serve. Meanwhile, 23 of them were told, excuse me, corruption, you in my government? Thank you very much. Get out. What? Yeah. Okay. That's how it happened. Okay. On the front page of the nation, how Palestine, did you know how the Palestine-Israel war has divided Africa? Mm -hmm. Apparently, Africa is divided over this war. Yep. Whereas a majority of countries on the continent have not commented on the ongoing deadly conflict, four have expressed their support for the Israelis, while eight have declared solidarity with Palestinians. Nine, however, have maintained a neutral position, painting the picture of a big split in Africa. Eh, a bit sensationalist. That All right. conclusion is the one I find interesting. Same here. Yes. I mean, then... There's a big split. There's a one split. Uh, no. Mm. Mm. It's a difference of opinion, a split. Yeah. No. It's a split of opinion. One must ask, were we together before? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> In order for there to be a split yes. <laughs> over a particular matter. But anyway, continue. Mm -hmm. Carrying on. Mm. Kubet threatens to boycott exams over payroll with my favorite people, K neck. Mm -hmm. You know what? Usually, invigilators are made up of representatives of unions, teachers, etc. etc. Invigilators and markers, mm. right? Now they've said <laughs> we have a problem with each other. We even we will not mark these KCSC exams. Mm. We will not mark these other exams. So unless you guys pay us the way we are supposed to be paid. Just Actually, don't manner. forget about it. You know, okay. what happens is, is that the membership card that they're using, mm. because these are teachers mm. who have been trained as examiners, invigilators, etc. And, so et and so forth and mm. so forth. Mm. So it's the membership card. Now, if these are their members and they say they're going to prevent their members, mm. but they, you see, their members have an employer. Right. Mm. So mm. who do you think they're going to listen to? Mm. The union a boss or the employer? Say like and this is, yes, and this is part of the requirement of the mandate that they have as teachers. Mm. Yes. Are you mandated to mark exams? No, no, no. no. It's, it's something you choose to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you mandated to invigilate? Um, they create a pool. No. Yes, you do. They create a pool based on your... But invigilation, you're mandated. In invigilation, you are. It's like jury duty. In it's the jury US. duty, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you're a teacher, you will be seconded to another school to invigilate exams. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that... And it's not just tradition, it's, it, it's something that is entrenched in the way we do, mm. we do our exams, yes. Okay. So it's not, a, you, you're not, it's not a Tafadali moment. Mm. Yeah. yeah. At some point you will. Yeah. Vote for Faith. She's running for the World Athlete of the Year. And that's in athletics. Double record, rather double world champion Faith Kipiegon, who broke three world records this year, is among 11 women nominees. And this is, another st this is the same story on corrupt KFS officers sent packing as Ruto cracks the whip on graft. 
And then finally, the crossroads. The AU, in his statement, seemed to lay blame on Tel Aviv. Mm. That's now looking mm. into this whole thing about where Africa sits with the Israel-Palestinian. Okay. The Business Daily. <coughs> they are focusing on the manufacturing sector, where over the last uh, 10 years, the manufacturing sector's contribution to GDP has dropped to 7% by the end of last year. Uh, now they're looking at that and saying 34 plants shut down reveals industry woes. 38 billion shillings that's a bank loan defaults that industry, uh, the manufacturing sector has. 10 years of pain, a dozen other firms downsize operations to stay afloat. 17.4% uh, input costs up in a year. So they're saying more than 30 manufacturing companies have shut down production plants in Kenya in under a decade, revealing the impact of an and competitive tax and business environment and cheaper imports on the local industry. They go further in the other pages actually showing the kind of companies that have closed since 2019, 20, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019 to 2020. Companies, for example, like Everready, um, East Africa, Flower City Limited, Flora Printers, a uh, company like Buzeki Dairy, uh, the River Mining Cement, uh, Rafiki Grains Limited, Spring Industries Limited, Thievan Enterprises, TSS Grain Millers, Tana Tires Manufacturer of Samir Africa Limited, uh, that's Yana Tires, and other companies. All those since 2016, shut down, shut down, shut down, shut down operations in Kenya. Mm. Those are jobs lost. Higher. Income lost. Contribution to GDP lost. New CDN bank owners disclosed after Centum sale, and they're looking at, so Centum's shareholding in CDN bank has reduced, and the new people who have taken up some of these shares, the Business Daily has looked into who are these owners of these companies. Some of them are owned by companies based in UAE and local business persons. Plans by KRA to install a system that will gather data on overseas tax cheats. And uh, there's a company called Gen Africa. Gen Africa Asset Managers has overtaken the Nas National Social Security Fund in SSF in portfolio size at the end of June, marking the first time the state-owned fund has fallen behind a private fund manager in nearly seven years. For a long time, NSSF has been the biggest player in the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Now, there's a fund manager who's doing like that. Mm. City? Mm. The star. Top right hand corner <coughs> until green. Right, right. One of these cases that are often very difficult to determine mm -hmm. uh, was in the docks. Mm. Burden of proof. Remember a case where the PS water and sanitation gentleman by the name of Correra had been accused of beating his wife? Expectant there was a story wife. like that, yes. Yes, the mm -hmm. thing went, uh, it ended up in court. Mm -hmm. Magistrate court said he had a case to answer. Mm -hmm. But uh, this thing, mm. the way it has turned out, now, P.S. Correr walked to freedom in wife beating case. And uh, it's shoddy investigations, doctors, theatrics, and lack of exhibits were cited on Wednesday as an Nairobi court set free water sanitation P.S. Julius Correr in a wife beating case. Mm. These domestic cases are heart wrenching. And for some reason in our country, they are very, very difficult to prove. Mm. Mm. And it is not that one doubts that what was being said may have happened. Mm. It is. It always boils down to the evidence. Mm. It always boils down to witnesses. It always boils down to the details that would now take the case beyond doubt. Mm. Yes. But the PS in his defense had said, you know, guys, you need to drop this case. My wife is determined, determined to depict me as a violent man and to tarnish my name. But by this time, a woman has the number of children she had. It wasn't one. Mm. Expecting one. There were others. So we're talking about four to five children. That's somebody you've lived with for quite a while. Mm. Yes. So it begs the question, so what exactly was happening here? Bus. Yes. That is the question. What really was happening here? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so he's been set free. Good, good. Mm. He's been discharged under the Section 215 of the Criminal Procedure Code. Let me ask this question. Um, criminal cases, can one appeal? Criminal case? Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, all the way. Mm. That's why I remember we were seeing a case yesterday of that um, lady. The lady. 
in Langata Women Prison. Yes, the one who apparently who had stabbed now been allowed by the Court of Appeal to appeal the decision of the Court of Appeal at the Supreme Court. Yes. Mm. Okay. So that was that. Now, mm. <coughs> court saves teacher who defiled pupils. A serial sexual offender has got a major reprieve after court saved him from a 45-year jail term and substituting it with 15 years. Okay? Uh -huh. This is a primary school teacher who was convicted of defiling three of his students mm. aged 14, another one 13. Why did they reduce the, 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 the... I mean, why did they reduce the number of years? This guy, they found him guilty. Mm. Why reduce the number of years from 45 to 15? Why maybe, did they just put it to 60? Maybe they're looking at other circumstances. Maybe you need to get into the detail of the story. I will get into the detail. Of the but judge said. Yeah, but let me be a bit dramatic details. first before I get into the Why not go to 60? Please. Come on, for heaven's sake, man. Mm. 13, 14, what's the matter with this person? Mm. Why not life? Yes. Hmm. In fact, we haven't scrapped the death penalty so yet, why have we? that? Yes. <laughs> I mean, while we're at it. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Girls call for pads, dispenser in toilets, just like condoms. This is a story that has come up right as the day of the girl child is celebrated. That could exactly be an innovative thing to do. It makes absolute sense. I think Complete. so. It makes very serious sense. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why didn't we think of it earlier? Okay. Matiangi grilled over two campuses and 600 million loss. Former Interior Cabinet Secretary on Wednesday fought claims that he caused a 600 million loss to two universities by directing closure of two satellite campuses. All right. Okay. Then bang, 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 bang in the middle. Right there. Two. Mm. Raila MPs demand ethnic audit of state. As Mio MPs asked by partisan team to recommend tribal audit of the government. Okay, fine, we've got it. Then millionaire CS2 year in three million shilling battle with ex-husband the story is on page two and then the details are outlined okay <coughs> i often wonder how what the be, you know problem yes domestic problem we get it mm. get it kabisa get it mm -hmm. when it is given this sort of headline mm. and their children involved mm. children i'm concerned about mm. do these parents understand what these things do to children because everybody in the country knows. Mm. Yep. Everyone. Yep. Mm. Even those who did not want to know. Mm. No. Many people who do not need to know. No. Let me tell you. I know the trauma that these things cause because there were guys I went to school with mm. and unfortunately there was an incident where their mother was named in a certain matter. Mm. They received adverse nicknames and that lived with them for the duration of their time and in the their school. These mm. are not... These are not pleasant things mm. for children. Yeah. Can these matters not be settled somewhere quietly and people come to an understanding and agreement? I mean, you are the guys who decided. These children didn't decide to have you as parents. Mm. Yes. And then you burden them with your issues. Okay. 20, 20 minutes to 7. Mamaliza Kurant. Yeah, I'm taking out. Nangoja ni. Why are you angry? Go back to singing. You were happier a few minutes ago. It's 20 to 7. Ndu, tell us about traffic. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. All right, what are we looking at? A little bit of movement on the Thicker Superhighway, as is, would come at this time. Uh, you're getting in towards that uh, drift just past survey. And it's because of the Pangani underpass, that little tunnel where everything goes through as you're going towards the city. Um, that's where the holdup is. After that, you're fine. Then going towards Wangari Madai or going towards Moranga Road, um, you're good. Juja Road is starting to build up. That's significant this morning. In and outbound traffic is doing a thing. And uh, it's already building on the drift at James Gishiro. Everywhere there's a drift every morning, there's some traffic. The Red Hill Link Road also is not left out of this. We're seeing some movement here and there. And Limuru Road is also starting to build up quite early. Jogo Road, we'll look at it from the um, Makadara train station junction. It's all the way through towards Landis Road now at this point. We're fine. Uh, around uh, Mombasa Road. Then you're going to get to Cabanas, going towards North Airport Road, out towards Mbakasi, and then towards North Airport Road. That is busy, busy, busy. Gong Road, Bado. Use it. You'll be fine getting into the CBD. And Langata Road is also looking pretty good right about now. It's going to build up on Magadi. It's already starting to do that. So if you've left, you want to, you know, make a dash for it. And if you haven't, you might want to think about that now. All right. Look at it around 7 o'clock and what has occurred then. Spice of MKE on X. Talk to us there and let's keep things moving.
102.5 Spice FM Kisumu Mature, intelligent talk every morning Spice up yourself Mornings done right If you thought that the president was not serious about the war against grafts He is Faced with calls to tame runway corruption in the civil service, President William Ruto yesterday took a bold step and directed the dismissal and prosecution of 29 Kenya Forest Service um, employees involved in corrupt dealings. Mm. Those targeted in the purge include six forest managers and 23 rangers who were supposed to be expunged from the government payroll by today, according to an order by the head of state. Dr. Ruto has been under pressure to slay the dragon of corruption, um, which has permeated all spheres of his administration, including the Ministry of Environment, which he blamed for the destruction of water towers across the country. It is you guys. Yeah. And so now we've seen that there's a problem. Mm. Um, this is what he said, and I quote, There are forest managers and officers already found culpable. Those found either compromised, incompetent, or engaging in corruption that has led to the destruction of our forest assets, I have instructed the KFS board to terminate their employment. Mm. This is as the DCI, that's the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, mm -hmm. concludes investigations to make sure these people are prosecuted. So it's a double whammy. You'll be fired and mm. then you will be investigated and prosecuted. From tomorrow, that is today, mm -hmm. I don't want them on the government payroll as they are saboteurs encouraging the destruction of our environment. There must be a thorough cleanup in KFS and I have instructed the Environment Ministry to ensure the tragedy that had become an environmental, com that had become of environmental conservation must come to an end. Yes, please. Were they selling whatever it is? That were they, they selling were trees? Were they selling it to themselves? Uh, no. Okay. I think you know where I'm going with this. Yes, please. Yes. Where are you so, going? Well, where I'm going is... Did I say people. what you're thinking? Please. So she's saying mm. that they're not the only ones involved in this. No. That if the president wants to be serious about fighting this thing, yeah. you cannot just have one side. That you must go to also the other side. Willing mm. buyer, willing sell, mm. seller. So the other people in this whole racket, who they are, are they? Selling if they're not why buying. have you not brought them also into the conversation? Abi? Our laws are very clear about these matters. In mm. fact, if you remember, uh, one of the things that our laws now dictated after they had been amended and amended and amended mm. was if you are caught with proceeds of crime, mm. the, the, the penalty that you are likely to suffer is probably more than the person who actually per, 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 perpetrated the particular crime. Mm. So if we have a situation where, and stop mooing me, if you have a situation <laughs> where... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay. uh <-huh>. See, <laughs> mm. there are people who buy these products and don't hum it. Just listen, okay? <laughs> wow. Okay. Sawa. Sawa. Mm. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Point made. <laughs> a judge will be here at seven mm. plus a lawmaker. Mm. And they'll be looking at, you know, the penal code and all these things. Mm. Let's ask them actually about this one. Yeah. Very this much particular right. question. That one. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm. Ah, yeah. But then the president is saying, Kesho was Irudi Kazini. In fact, you can't just wake up and fire people. Like boss. That. No, you can't. Kenya No, you can't. Can you no, you you can't. <laughs> no, not even contract. <laughs> You can't. You, you can't, can't do that. He said you. he wants them not just fired. There's a law. Removed from the payroll. No, no, no. They don't no, no you can't. You, you, you it's basically, can't. unless he's just saying, let's initiate that process. I'm asking the board, can, the board, can you take, I mean, you have, if there's evidence that presented before you, can you expedite this process? But he didn't say that. Start immediately. Alisa Majebu quoting Alisa Ma, he's told the board to terminate their employment. <laughs> yeah. And after that, mm. not at I'm asking you, can you please check if something is wrong? No. Board, terminate employment forthwith. Sure. Thereafter, yeah. DSI, DCI, yeah. investigate and prosecute. <laughs> no, please, can you check if maybe? Mm -mm. Uh, but that's a, prob that's a thing. That's the problem. How does the board terminate employment? Mm. Board terminate employment following procedure and law. Now, the end game was, is yeah. that this person will no longer be employed in this company. Now, because see, we have so found something that is actually incriminating, which puts capability on them i understand what you're saying but now when you uh, when you tell the board to terminate eh. 
that you have an expected outcome already. Yes. This is what you told the board to yes, do. Yes. Now, if the board is to follow procedure, what if they find out actually this person actually didn't do it's anything fine. wrong? It's, it's not just we, procedure. You see? If they if follow the procedure and they find that they actually wrong, they have no evidence, don't take them to court. Uh, hey, but your boss has told you, essentially, what I seek here is termination. You see, don't by the time stories. the president is saying 29, how many is it? 29. 23. 23, 23 plus rangers, 6, yeah. Right? 23 mm. plus 6. Mm. It's because information has reached him. Of course. There are some 23 plus 6 mm. who, this information is coming not from elsewhere. It's coming from the Kenya Forest Service itself. Yes, itself. Okay. There must be something that has happened within the Kenya Forest Service, mm. some internal investigation that has fingered this 29. The president is saying, <coughs> Okay. Mm. You are it. Watoke kazini. Okay. Next story. Next just, story. The this same same president. He has told those people, Mamba Ningabe? Tattoo. You, you can't say that, my friend. You'll be sued. Can't say it anymore. <laughs> Why not? Uh, uh, yeah. Let him you now you risk mind. legal consequences for use of the phrase Mambo ni Matatu, accompanied by the three fingers without permission <laughs> from President William Ruto. <laughs> In a bid to protect the phrase, lawyer Adrian Kamodo says Dr. Ruto trademarked Mambo di Matatu, making it a protected intellectual property. The phrase first gained prominence last month when he himself, Dr. Ruto, issued the stern warning to sugar sector cartels. Kamodo says anyone seeking to use the phrase alongside the three fingers sign must ask the president's permission. Oh, okay. okay. It means so he now has the exclusive use of the phrase. The protection of the phrase is contained in the latest publication of the Kenya Industrial Property Institute Journal. According to the lawyer, Mambo di Matatu is a positive phrase, a clarion call and exclamation, specifically devised, coined and publicly attributable to Dr. Ruto. With the trademark registration, Ruto now becomes exclusive owner of this phrase. It means that the phrase forms part of Ruto's intellectual assets, duly recognized under Article 11 of the Constitution. Uliza Swaliako? No, uh, we have legal minds coming here. We'll ask them. Mm -hmm. yes. Can the president actually can coin such a phrase? Ah, uh, well, he can coin it. Can he actually register? Uh, what so Kibaki could have registered a kubaf. Yes, and also <laughs> president, the, late, the late president Ma Moi could have registered peace, love, and unity. Uh, yes, and these are mine. Oh. So, so do make a busy. Mm. It's also going to be registered. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no make busy. So, this Adrian Kamodo, it's his name, is the lawyer. Yes. Mm. Okay. Yes. He's he a lawyer, looked lawyer. and looked and looked and saw this. And said, oh, all the things that we have to do in this, this country. country. This is an important thing. He's a very <laughs> active lawyer. <laughs> okay. People immediately jumped into taking Mambo Di Matatu and making t shirts and merchandise with Mambo Di Matatu. And they're like, he's saying, look, the person who actually came up with it, let's remove the title he president. He didn't come up with it. He said it publicly and he said yes. Mambo Di Matatu. We've been using it. that phrase for the longest and time. And he popularized it by doing this Mambo Di Matatu. People have been saying mm. there are three things from antiquity. Okay. Did they register them? No, they didn't but register it. <laughs> but then... Are we going to register every phrase, but in this country? Surely, at this rate, <laughs> eh. I mean, for heaven's sake. You know, if you look at it, now, if it wasn't William Ruto who had said it, if it would, let's say it was, it was a musician who had actually put it in a song, and it became very popular, that musician could go and register. Copyright. Right? Mm. And just intellectual property and say, this is mine, this is my trademark, the Mamburi Matatu with three fingers, and also copyright it. Sour. Okay. Aye. Now, put that musician or artist or creative and give them the name William Ruto. Sure. Yeah. Do they have the same right? Yes. Okay. Now, make that William Ruto president who is a state officer. Mm. Do they have the same right? They would. I mean, there's a neighboring country that has a former DJ as a president, so this is not strange. Mm. Yes. Does anything that the president does in execution of his office actually make him... A public asset, he himself is a public asset. Can he start owning public assets with yes, he can. because of his duty? Yes, he can. You see, the thing is, every time these things come up, the beauty of it is we're just expanding our understanding of the law. <laughs> and we're also understanding that 
the debate space has been widened. Mm. Yes, so we can actually debate and ask the questions that ordinarily we wouldn't ask. So Adrian Kamoth is his name. Yes. Thank you very much for bringing this thing bringing up. Bringing it up. Actually, yes. I think even uh, someone is saying Atoli should register Allah. I think Atoli had actually raised issues with that. Mm. Allah. Allah. He says, uh, 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 uh. I'm a is out. Uh, it's all right. Zoya is out. Well, the debate now rages, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm. Good thing, isn't it? Mm. It is. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Top five communities dominating state jobs. This is the public service job audit of 2021. Remember that debate that I read about early on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what the star has indicated. Mm. Okay. The Kikuyu. 45,291. Dakisi, 16,167. Kalenjin, 35,991. Luo, 25,382. Luya, 25,382. Okay. How many communities? Okay, no. Let me ask uh, in a more appropriate, more palatable. How many tribes do we have in Kenya? 45. Okay. And these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the other 30. Sure. I think this report is incomplete it is. if it's not comparing. So let's look at it in the last 10 years, okay? In 2013, the Kikuyu Community X, the Kisi X, in 2023, Kikuyu Community X, you know, is there a change? Because this conversation started when the National Cohesion and Integration Commission was formed and saying, let's also look at our public service, is it all inclusive and all? And the NCIC started conducting this kind of survey. Yes, I remember did. Mzalendo Kibunja, yes, the chair did. of NCIC, always releasing this report and raising these concerns. Has there been a change? That is what the report should be telling the, us. Not just the, saying at your work. Actually, you there's an expert comment oh, on that very same page, uh, on page five, uh, by uh, Danvers Makori, and he says mm. uh, the audit is their mandate, NCIC by law, yeah. and that the report will be released in the next two months mm. uh, to actually give details of this. One, they're going to start with the county government because mm. the threshold is that one community cannot have more than 33% of the slots. Yeah. One community. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, for the country, we'll wait a couple of more months and then they'll give for the country. Mm -hmm. Okay. The question I want to ask is this. It is good to parade these numbers, but should we they not also be accompanied by other factors? Let's start with population. Mm. The more people are, the more likely they are to be represented. Yeah, it's not complicated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we want to understand also. Go into the gr like, get granular on this one. Mm. Talk about jobs, qualifications, requirements, and go into the details of the numbers of people in that community who are quali who have those qualifications yeah. and who are likely to be employed. I mean, get granular on this thing so that when you give the numbers, mm. you are giving a fair presentation or representation of the facts. I agree. I agree. Just throwing numbers, 15,000. Working 20, in public 000. service in what? So, y yes. how many people work in public service in the diplomatic corps? Precisely. All right. How many are qualified diplomats Yes. in this country? Of those who are qualified but, diplomats, mm -hmm. how many are Kisi? What's the percentage of a kissy? Like that. What's the percentage like of a that. Then, like how many that. of those? And let it not be one article in the paper. Uh -uh, make it a series. Yes. So that we go ministry by ministry, state department by state department, like that. Parastatal by parastatal. So that we know. So that when this debate is being had, we are well informed and we know what we're talking about. But when you throw these numbers... It actually doesn't represent the truth yeah. in the way it should. And then yeah. it throws... It doesn't. Look, and what it does is yeah. that it throws emotions in the air. Yes, it does. And unfortunately, they are not grounded in, you know, substantial facts. Some of know? these so things... it's necessary to have that kind of serialization. Yes, yes. Otherwise, you, I think we do a little bit more harm than What you will find that when you now start going to parastatals, you can find some communities that are considered a smaller community. Their numbers are phenomenally high mm. in certain state departments or in certain parastatals. Now, again, if you want to do justice to these reports, you must explain how that came about. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. If there's a historical aspect to it, please present that historical aspect so that when people are talking about it, they understand how it came about because yeah. it didn't happen yesterday. Mm. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. How has this been the way it is? This thing must be represented and presented fairly and the details must be given. Otherwise, it's just a political tool that is being used and it can be used to demonize certain communities. That's true. Yeah. Yes. True.
Let me give you another story. Please. Okay. The unions have said, <laughs> you see this exam that you people want to write okay. this month. So, now, you will treat us well. Otherwise, we'll do what? We'll boycott. Mm. The Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers has threatened to boycott the invigilation, supervision, and marking of this year's national examinations, citing poor treatment. It comes as the scheduled dates for the start of the tests at the end of this month are fast approaching. Through its national officials, the union decried the poor and risky working conditions as well as the meagre and delayed payments of allowances its members have been subjected to in the past by the Kenya National Examinations Council. Mm. Accordingly, the union demanded an agreement with the um, council to harmonize the contentious issues before its members can decide to offer their services. The leaders are speaking or they've been speaking, and this was during the annual general meeting um, of the Kupet branch held at a hotel in Mosocho in Kisi County Tuesday. The meeting brought together members and officials from Nyanza, Western and Rift Valley, but they were speaking with a national voice here. And the uh, National Deputy Secretary General Moses Ndurima said that the union has no agreement with the council on the appointment and use of its members in invigilating and marking national examinations. So they usually offer their services mm. because they usually need, you know, numbers. Mm. So they say, now, before we offer, and we know you need the numbers, let's come to an agreement about how and when you will pay us and how you will get us to uh, centers where we will now be taking um, part. That sound like reasonable. Where in vigilation, when there's supervision, where mm -hmm. there's marking, are you going to transport us there? If you're telling me to go and invigilate in school X, how will I get there? Yep. And then when I finish, you want to keep me for weeks on end, you're not giving me my allowances. Mm. Should I be paid a, paid a daily allowance? Mm. Can I have that as I start the day? Can I have my allowance? Or as I finish, can I have my allowance? So they said, until and unless this agreement is in place mm. between the council and the union, let us start planning to go for Christmas. Mm-hmm. So find people other way, places, not us. But I think they sound like reasonable, uh, not demands really. No, I mean, so sure. requests. Yeah. yeah, those are requests. Yeah. Uh, I have a minute. Let me just tell you this quick one. Interior CS uh, Kithure Kindiki has said that the government will reveal the planners and financiers of the perennial Lamu attacks before the end of this week. This week ends tomorrow. Yes. Okay. He also announced that the state will financially reward Kenyans who will volunteer information that will help in apprehending those dangerous criminals. He appeared before the Senate yesterday to answer questions regarding the state of security in the country. He said, we now know who's been organizing the spate of violence in Lamu. We are going to release the names and photos and everything of those people. And we'll tell the public, please, Ukimuona huyu, usiweke taya, pigia police. Call police. Call police. Eric, just a line. He mm. also says that there is mm. a plan to compensate families of officers who died in the line of duty. Mm -hmm. So let's see how that works out. Let's see how that works out. He says 58 police officers died last year in the course of duty from the fight against terror, banditry, and other dangerous security operations. 58 officers. Well, keep it here for more conversations. It's Justice Thursday. We are going to be hosting a judge and a member of parliament. Good morning, 7 a.m. Spice up your life. Good morning, this is Newsworm Dennis Asato. The Senate Ad Hoc Committee investigating the proliferation of religious organizations in Kenya summoned Pastor Ezekiel Dero to appear before you tomorrow at 10 a.m. The committee is probing the circumstances leading to the deaths of followers of controversial Good News International Church preacher Paul McKenzie in Shakahola Forest, Kilifi County. Pastor Dero is expected to provide the committee with information regarding the registration and compliance status of his new live prayer center in charge, as well as its beliefs and ideology. He will also be put to task to explain his views on extreme indoctrination and exploitation of religious followers as well as his association with Mackenzie.
The government is committed towards creating a visible transformation in the operations and markings of the national government administration officials across the country. In pursuit of this commitment, the national government has embarked on a journey to equip administrators with the tools and expertise they need to succeed in the execution of their mandate. Principal Secretary for Internal Security and National Administration Raymond Amolo has disclosed that the government has initiated a retraining program for Ngaos with the goal of further strengthening their capacity to provide effective, efficient and responsive services to Wananchi. He made the remarks when he presented over the opening ceremony of the Reorientation Training Forum for Regional and County Commissioners at the Kenya School of Government in Lokabet, Nairobi. Anyone seeking to use the now popular Mambo ni Matatu catchphrase will be required to first ask permission from President William Ruto. This comes after President Ruto's lawyer, Adrian Kamotho, trademarked the catchphrase, making it an intellectual property. The phrase first gained prominence on September when Ruto used it to warn the sugar cartels who were accused of sabotaging the sector. President Ruto had warned that the corrupt elements must choose between leaving the country, being committed to jail, or going to heaven. Now, the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers has threatened to boycott the national examination marking exercise over poor pay. Kupet Deputy Secretary General Moses Nduluma said that it was so unfortunate for teachers' pay to be delayed for more than six months when security guards were well taken care of more than 70 Kupet officials across the country back the position saying it's time teachers unite in order to improve their welfare. Those who are examiners, we will never have the terms of examiners improving. Come as is when we come examiners, we cannot participate in boycotting so that we can get what we want. Last year, to the end of Mangu, we got the CRE teachers who are boycott. Again, unfortunately, when Kina Walito Karakisha, Nayo Maki Kaindrea, we expect the data centers, examiners who are in Gri, Iri, to Saidiane, terms of examiners, who are better. So we are asking those of us this year to Saidiane. Residents of Marigat in Baringo staged protests blocking the Marigat Nakuru Highway to complain about the poor quality of health care at the Marigat Sub County Hospital. Hundreds of locals closed the business and marched through the town of Marigat before gathering at the Marigat Sub County Hospital gates. The residents complained that the hospital has not had ambulance services for over a year, lacks medicines and doctors for the accusing medics at the facility of incompetence. Now, Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Nahomicha has said the government would not renew its contract with Cuban medical professionals who came to Kenya six years ago to fill openings at county hospitals. Speaking during the pre-national dialogue on human resource for health, Nahomicha said that the Kenyan doctors are as well committed to the same cause as the Cuban doctors who are performing. The CS said her ministry will make sure that the country has a properly trained and well cared for personnel in order to provide universal and high quality health care. She emphasized the administration of President William Ruto's dedication to tackling issues facing business, notably the health care sector. And Western Kenya residents are set to benefit from increased power generation following the approval by the Cabinet for Kenya Electricity Generation Company to embark on the Gogo Hydropower Redevelopment Project. The Gogo Hydropower Redevelopment Project, situated along the banks of River Kuja in Megari County, is a visionary initiative poised to elevate the dam's electricity generation capacity from 2 megawatts to a robust 8.6 megawatts. According to Kenya Managing Director, and CEO Peter Njenga. Beyond its economic impact, the project aligns with Kenya's commitment to clean energy and bolsters its efforts to achieve their 100% clean energy targets outlined in the Global Climate Action Agenda. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aceto. Good morning. Spice FM, Nakuru. All right, it's a few minutes after 7 o'clock and we're looking at traffic. Now in the city, it's packing up on the Thika Superhighway coming through towards the CBD. As you get towards Moranga Road, it's going to pack up even more and then closer to the Globe Cinema overpass, the underpass, everything pass. Um, we're also looking at Kiambu Road, heavy with traffic, in and outbound, but actually is a number of lanes then coming through towards Mathaiga Square. Let's look on James Gishura where it's packed up as well. Gong Road is feeding on to Gitanga Road. Naivasha Road is also delivering some of that traffic and it's all 
sweeping out through towards James Gishoro and are getting on to Waiakiwe at some point. Okay, CBD is busy. Uh, we're looking at it coming in from Upper Hill. Um, folks who are coming off the Nyar Stadium roundabout, then going towards the Huru Highway, parking that up. And Jogo Road also pretty busy. That started early as well. Manyanja Road, Kangundo Road, Juja Road. We're seeing all of this busy getting into the CBD. Let's take a look in a short while and see what happens as we get into traffic hour proper. For now, it seems manageable. Let's talk on Spice FM. K-E on X. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the and Situation Room, the only the way to start your today, day. The Situation Room on Spice FM, now on KTN Home, on YouTube and Facebook. A very good morning to you on this 12th day of October 2023. It's Thursday. It's Justice Thursday. Thursdays, we endeavor to have conversations relating to matters of justice and access to justice in the country. We have two guests in the studio. Before we welcome them, let's remind you about what we'll be doing at the end of this month. We'll be running and we'll be doing it for a good cause. Mm. It's Kenya's largest single day athletics event and it's back for the 20th edition of the Standard Chartered Nairobi Marathon. It's taking place on the 29th of October, very early in the morning, uh, getting out to run. Have you registered? Well, you still have some time if you've not. www.nairobimarathon.com. Uh, register there. It's 2,000 shillings. And like we said, it's a special one because it's a 20th one. And all proceeds from this go towards the Future Makers program, which helps young people, especially girls and people with disability to learn, earn and grow. Indeed. Mm. And if you're thinking of having an excuse, oh, you know, I'll not be in town on that day. So why register? If you will be in Mombasa, you can run in Mombasa. Indeed, you can. If you'll be in Kisumu, you can run in Kisumu. Mm. If you'll be in Eldred, you can run in Eldred. If you'll, if be, you'll in be in Timbuktu, Melbourne. Yeah. Australia, you can run. If you'll be in Timbuktu, you can run as well. Uh -huh. And how? There's a virtual run. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you're running in the clouds or in space. Essentially, what that means is that you run running where you on are. Zoom. Or running on Zoom. <laughs> you run where you are, and then you can record your numbers and put them on what is called the leaderboard. Mm. So, a week before, you can actually run the race. It doesn't matter where you are on the globe. That's it, isn't it? It's great because the Standard Chartered Marathon is for everybody, wherever you are. You can get it done. Indeed. Also, let's tell you about some entertainment. Maisha Magic Plus on DSTV Channel 163 and Go TV Channel 3 have new shows. One has already premiered this week. It's called Kasiri. Kasiri is telling you just all about, you know, those things that happen in the dark and come out in the light. It premiered on Monday. It'll be airing on Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m., and then from the 23rd of this month, another one, again, about things that happen in the dark that will come out in the light is called Zari. It will be premiering on the 23rd at 8.30 p.m. And that one will be showing on Maisha Magic Plus, DSTV Channel 163, Go TV Channel 3, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 8.30 p.m. Look out for those ones. How do you get there? Just get your DSTV, uh, channel 163, Go TV channel 3. You can dial star 423 hash or download my DSTV or my Go TV app. Get or stay connected as usual. Terms and conditions apply. STAJ. That is the agenda of Chief Justice Martha Corman. Social transformation through, through access, access to, to justice. justice. Among those things, of course, is ensuring that our constitution aligns with everything else, including our penal code, and making it easier for people to access justice. Today, we want to have a conversation about um, looking at the reforms that need to happen so that our 
laws are aligned to the constitution, especially in the criminal side. We are joined by the Honorable Lady Justice Grace Ngenye. She is a judge of the High Court and also the chair of the National Council on the Administration of Justice Committee on Criminal Justice Reforms. Judge, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Karibu sana. We also welcome again into the studio, he's been here before, the Honorable Wakili Edward Mureu. He is the MP for Gatanga constituency and a member of the National Assembly Justice and Legal Affairs Committee. Wakili, good morning. Good morning, Latif, and uh, my good friend, Mr. C.T. Mm. <laughs> Good friend, uh, <laughs> Ndu. Mm, but, <laughs> got it. I'm so proud to be here, back here again. Very good. Uh, this early morning, mm. um, first and foremost, allow me just to bring you warm greetings. Despite the cold weather this morning, mm -hmm. allow me to bring you warm greetings from the great people of Gatanga constituency. Very good. And also, I'm also very proud today uh, because of pulling out a judge from the bench and bring her to the spice. Very good. I think he is uh, all might and powerful over here at the spice. And uh, uh, Justice Ngenya, I'm so proud also that we, we've been college, we've been to college together. Mm. And maybe uh, for your information, Justice Ngenya and a group of other six girls, they used to go together as a group. Mm. <laughs> and uh, they were first year and I was a third year. Mm -hmm. And you know, in a group of six girls, to be able to get attention of only one is very difficult because they're always chatty Bus. with one another. Bus. But by the grace of God and the grace of the rains and the storms, mm -hmm. I was able to snatch one of the girls in the group who was her very good friend, <laughs> who eventually <laughs> ended up in my house yeah. and I gave her a title of my wife. Oh, well. <laughs> her <name is> Maria. <laughs> this one has a happy ending. <laughs> so I'm so proud to be here because again what happened at the campus is that uh, everybody went their own ways. Mm -hmm. uh, Justice Genya joined the judiciary. I went for the, to the commercial practice. Mm. And I'm so proud and that you today, remained in the bar. Uh, I remained in the bar. <laughs> on the bar. I should remain on the bench. <laughs> Within the bar. <laughs> yes, but there was no, no, no nothing to drink in the bar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and eventually, um, we've met again. Happily, that um, she's. I'm not. I'm meeting her again mm. uh, in in my committee mm. of justice and legal committee. Now this time, not as a magistrate. Not as a judge, but a judge of a court of appeal. Am I right? Mm, actually, so court of appeal, you need to be yes. very careful, mm. uh, Latif, when yes, you say, yes, say yes. judge of the high court. Yes. That's an understatement. It's judge of the court of appeal. My sincere apologies. <laughs> J.A. Uh, I'm also very proud that I am the one who received uh, the proposed amendments mm. uh, to modernize our penal code mm. on behalf of the justice and, and legal, legal committee affairs. of parliament. Mm. Uh, and maybe also, I'm also very proud that the, for the first time in the history of the Republic of Kenya, the consumers of the law, or the, the, or the, the people who operationalize the law, mm. have taken upon themselves to bring up proposals to amend the law to suit the situation. That is amazing. It has, it's an unprecedented. It has never happened before. Uh, you you, you mm. f may find that in the old constitution, it's only Attorney General who had the power to bring new mm. laws. Today, under our new constitution, everybody, mm. either individual institutions, they have the capacity now to change the law, propose the law, bring them before parliament. And I'm so proud that um, this, the old piece of relic, the old law, that's the penal code, um, has been able to bring an attention. And the beauty about it is that it's, a, it's an omnibus. Very good. There have been small, small amendments here and there, but I think these are omnibus uh, repealing of the penal code. We'll get into the details shortly. Thank to you very much, Wakili. Yeah. Thank you so much. To welcome you to the conversation, and yes, judge of the Court of Appeal. I'd seen that earlier, and then yeah. saw something else, and it con con totally confused me. Sincere apologies, judge. Yeah, it is all right. To welcome you to the conversation, CT has the day's proverb. He always has a proverb. And every week he picks one country where he goes and gathers some interesting proverbs. This yes. week's proverbs are? From the Tanzania. The, the, this, for the last two weeks, well, we were first in Kenya, then we went to Uganda, now in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. So we dedicated these three weeks to East, uh, the three East African countries. Mm -hmm. 
The bitterness of a son is known by the parents. The bitterness of a son is known by the parents. That's the lady. Yes. What do you make of this proverb? What's your interpretation? Thank you this? very much, uh, Latif. But even before I get into that, <laughs> you know, Muheshimiwa knows me too personally. Mm. And so he can speak so much about me. <laughs> and uh, it is true. Uh, our journey began quite far. In the 90s, Latif, we must be much younger. Mm. I know. <laughs> well, in the 90s when you were doing what you were doing, I was doing something else. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we yeah. have come this far. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but before we get into that, receive a kind greetings from my boss. The Honorable the Chief Justice. In fact, I'm here with his bless with her blessings. Mm -hmm. And um, we engaged them, the JLAC members. And as he says, it is very true that he's the person who received the bills. In fact, I have copies of uh, our about uh, proposed amendment bills. Uh, what is interesting is that um, these uh, statutes, the Penal Code and the CPC, are as old as about 70 years. And the last time there was a holistic amendment to them was about 1930. So for us as a committee, NCCJR, in short, under the auspices of the NCUJ, are quite honored uh, that we have undertaken this journey to ensure that the two statutes are holistically uh, amended. Mm. And as Mheshimiwa um, says, of course, there have been piecemeal bills that go to parliament intending to amend and have amended uh, piecemeal uh, provisions of the two statutes mm. and 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 therefore ourselves being charged to overhaul the entire criminal justice system <coughs> in kenya and then by extension taking it upon ourselves as one of the terms of references uh, for the committee's output to overhaul these two statutes is no mean tasks and let me tell you we have traversed this country we have been able to get views uh, from themselves as parliamentarians from all stakeholders in the criminal justice systems consequent to which we have been able to compile uh, this uh, piece of work mm. and uh, therefore we are happy to engage the Republic of Kenya to tell them exactly why we want to overhaul uh, these uh, two statutes and and uh, we have, let me just now give the basic background. Yeah. Yeah, we have the 2010 Constitution. Yes. Yeah, which is quite uh, progressive in nature. So if we do not progress other statutes to align with the progressive Constitution, then we are doing zero work. Starting with the Penal Code, as colonial as it were, it uses very derogatory words. Uh, particularly for persons who are sick mm. uh, with psychosocial, intellectual, and mental disorders, such words as imbecile, idiots, mm. insane person. Uh, and, you know, people do not know that persons who have mental disorders, who have intellectual and psychosocial disabilities, are sick people wanting treatment. What about persons who attempt to commit suicide, mm -hmm. Latif? These are also persons who are sick. Mm. Really, do you need such a penal offense in our statutes? No. So we need to divert these persons elsewhere, where they can get treatment, where they can get counseling, and uh, other kind of, uh, of, of support. Mm. Uh, we also have um, other provisions uh, that we need to uh, uh, amend, for instance, to decriminalize and reclassify petty offenses. Uh, what happened uh, before the formation of our committee is that a study was carried out by the National Council on Administration of Justice conjunctively with the Legal Resources Foundation and the Resource Oriented Development Initiative RODI, mm. um, where they found that the justice system is biased against the poor. Yep. Uh, and I think that is not an understatement. It's a fact, mm. uh, a latif. Uh, so much so that those persons who are poor, they are charged. They fight their way into jails. As a mm. result, our jails are congested up to 70% by p petty offenders. Yep. So what can we do as a committee? And to help this nation so that we reverse the situation. So we have proposed to delete the petty offenses that are provided for under the penal code. Delete. Uh, delete them. What does that mean? Delete to them is to remove them. So that petty offenders, the very minor petty offenders, you know, 
I think we need another session for us to define what petty offense is. Yeah. But we have very minor petty offenses like falling the, the air, insulting, going on the streets for purposes of uh, uh, prostitution, uh, minor trading on the streets. You know, mm. we want to remove them from the main penal uh, statutes. But that is not to say there is no justifiable cause to punish such persons. Otherwise, we would have a lawless society. Mm. Uh, as a result, we have proposed ways of punishing them, diverting them. You know, you can give a warning, you can give them community service, you can put them under probation, you can ask them to sign a commitment to keep peace, etc., etc. So and, we are not decriminalizing? We are decriminalizing. To decriminalize Latif just mm. means that you remove such petty offenses from the main penal statute okay. so that they do not have to go before a magistrate, uh, take those pleas, and they are taken to jail. And even if that were to happen, they mm. do not have to be placed under custody sentence. Okay. Simple as that. So it is a big mm. debate, and I, I think we go and I can stop at that so that uh, <laughs> I can see <laughs> Ms. Okay. Do wants yeah. to say something. I want to ask a question. <laughs> Question. Maybe we yes. can take a few steps back because yes. ooh, um, the penal code at its earliest, what is it meant to do? Because now we are saying, let's make some changes to mm -hmm. it. But a code, obviously, something that you then go by, right? So what was it originally established to do? It is it's a very simple answer. Mm -hmm. uh, penal code, what is penal? It's an offense. Mm -hmm. What is penal? It is to punish. So penal code provides for offenses that are punishable by law. And that is why we have the code. The code is what spells out what offenses are punishable and by what sentence. As simple as that. Mm -hmm. Then we have the criminal procedure code. The criminal procedure code, as the word procedure provides, is a process. What is the process of effectuating the penal code, as simple as that. So we have the offense statute mm -hmm. and the manner in which we punish those offenses. And then we have the procedural statute, the procedures through which we effect the penal code. It's as simple as that. I hope that is simple. And those two go <laughs> hand in hand. <laughs> those two go hand in hand, but uh, they must not necessarily work conjunctively because if you are charged, with, for instance, or an offense of stealing mm. under Section 275 of the Penal Code, it does not mean that I must necessarily have to refer to the CPC, that is the, P the, C the Criminal Procedure Code, to know how to punish you. Yeah. You know, if um, <clears throat> what you've just said only required a little knowledge of the English language yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and understanding what is being said, then I would agree with you. Yes. They are simple. But when you then involve the human person in their various capacities and you want to actualize it, then there's nothing simple about it. Really? True. Because then the individual comes with their wherewithal and with their own understanding and with their own biases. Yeah. Yes, it provides a guide, it provides a, a platform, it provides a structure within which one can work. But the thing that I find perhaps most disturbing is, mm. even when it's as clear as you're stating it, mm. internalizing it so that it is actually used and to achieve the purposes for which it was intended. Mm -hmm. And in the case that you have here, that's amidst the baggage of this penal code that you're trying to, to repeal. Mm. Because that is what has formed the mindset of those who are in their justice system. It is very true. Uh, thank you very much. It is very simple. And that is why we want to reform this criminal justice uh, uh, system. Because we have the code that is the penal code itself. It is providing for offenses and it's providing for means of punishment for those offenses. But uh, uh, clearly, when we come now to the justice sector, that is the adjudication process, we, we, we find that people are not quite uh, uh, applying it the way it is be, it's supposed to be applied. So much so that uh, if you are charged with a smaller offense, that is a minor offense, you, instead of applying an objective mind mm. uh, so that you do not necessarily have to go to jail, those persons are being sentenced to custodial sentences, whereas 
you have an option of even warning this person. You have an option of placing this person under a, a probation. You have this uh, option of even asking the person, please just commit yourself to keep peace and not to commit an offense. Yeah. That is it. But incidentally, you find that the justice sector has this um, mentality that since you have made an offense, the right way and the proper way and to satisfy the society is just to put you in jail. Yeah. And consequent to which I will just apply the custodial sentence. That is why now we find our own jails are full of these petty mm. offenders. So really the sensitization is very important. One. Number two is that for a person to just get to court or where you are working from mm. to see the penal code and to see an offense you know provided for becomes the eye catcher that this is what I'm supposed to apply. And therefore Mr. Latif, if we remove it from uh, a statute that is always on your table on a daily basis, then you have no basis to do what you ought not to do. But and you have the basis to do what is right. You know, as simple as that. We've actually had very many conversations on this show about petty offenders and the petty offenses and looking at the injustice that's meted out on people just because you were caught, I don't know, throwing garbage somewhere and you're taken to court, mm. and a judicial officer sentences you, first of all, puts you in remand, mm. let a 20,000 shillings bond or bail. And it just, it's, you can see it's impossible for this person to raise that kind of bond or bail. Mm. And we've been raising this issue. So mm. this is something that has been there for a long time. So, of course, reforms in this sector are absolutely what we need. However, and I want to come to you, Wakili as legislator and also as a lawyer it's taken us so long to actually get to this point where we are reforming and reviewing the penal code and the criminal procedure codes that means that we need to have some change of behavior and change of our own understanding as um, jurists because all the jurists before you have just been applying this and, you know, it's, they, they always argue, you know what, I, the, the criminal procedure code restricts me from thinking beyond this and applying my humanity and looking at this. And then we, the citizens, don't really understand the penal code, this, this, and the other. We just hear police telling us, penal code, 252, <laughs> <laughs> penal code. We hear lawyers saying, oh, to the penal we don't code. understand. The penal mm. Now it's come before you, and you have to come and consult us as you now look at whether this should actually pass into law. How are you going to sensitize the public so that we can all feel that, yes, everything that the NCAJ has actually, and the committee that's led by Justin Genya has been working on, is comprehensive and will bring justice to us, the citizens. Uh, thank you. I'm um, trying to put this issue on what you call digestible pieces. Because uh, sometimes we might be too legalists and we lose our audience. Mm. The, this is a process of number one, breathing life to our new constitution. And maybe just to answer your question on the, on the timing, uh, is breathing life under the new constitution to comply in particular on the Bill of Rights. Um, and number two uh, is to relook again because if you if this bill, the penal code was came up in 1930, so you talk about close about uh, close over close about um, 78 years, and uh, and therefore it was not meant for the common Kenyans who are walking on our streets. It was meant. It's a law which was meant, which was built up by a colonial master against just to control the the colonial the, the, again against the, his subjects, mm. and that's why you find even in terms of definition of certain terms, uh, imbecile, idiots, you find it in our penal current penal code. So, and and that's why I'm I'm very proud that this uh, proposal will will the first and foremost resonate very well with the common man uh, because as, as, as uh, Judge Vapio has said, the petty offenses predominantly 
affect the underprivileged, not because they are criminals, but the, by the state of uh, of the economic status. Mm. That's why they find themselves in the wrong place at the, at the wrong time. And and therefore, yes, I, I I want to I want to agree with her that it is timely, and it's addressing the common man, uh, from the language. To just, but to, to also from the language, uh, the, the language of the Pino code, mm. uh, and, and the Pino code is a law like any other. Is, mm. But to use the word code, code is a, an arrangement of things. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's civil procedure code, Pino code. Pino code is just a, it's like a pre, pre, you can even call it criminal law, okay. mm. uh, criminal act, uh, uh, just to make it much much easier. Uh, number two, you find that um, because this law was predominantly made by the colonialists to rule against the subjects. It was it, it does not serve the 21st century in terms of the current way of doing this. Do you know, um, uh, my good people, that um, hawking was a criminal offence under the old penal code? Mm -hmm. Is actually currently hawking, mm -hmm. and that is and hawking is basically is a petty trader mm -hmm. selling jugu karanga, mm -hmm. selling uh, um, uh, sweets on the streets, mm -hmm. selling handkerchief. That's a criminal offence. Do you also know mm -hmm. that falling the air is a criminal offence? Yes. Mm. You know, uh, CT is looking at me surprised. Yes, falling the air because <laughs> during the colonial times, if you go to in Amuzo, they, they, I think the Muzungu was expecting is only is only the blacks who can fall the air, uh, <laughs> and it became a, 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 a criminal offense. And that, those are the things we are talking about. Let me also point out: Do you know that there is no criminality in prostitution? The the crime mm. is earning from prostitution. And that's why there's a, another funny law called no. loitering without a purpose. Because if if then there is no a crime called prostitution, and the crime which arises from it is if you benefit from the income mm. of prostitution, then they may have to look for a way of ensuring they catch you because how do you prove that I, I, I make a living through money from obtained from prostitution? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's shambolic. Mm. Um, and therefore that's why they brought in that petty law called loitering Tanda without Tanda. a purpose. And, and I'll tell you this, if you go to our coast today, and I'm, and I'm very, very happy that um, we, we are at this juncture, Today, if you go to our courts in Kibera, uh, Makadara, mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in our normal law courts on a, on a Monday, you spend about almost seven, eight hours. And the crimes you hear is about, is a crime of vagabond, mm -hmm. crime of rotating without a purpose, drunk and disorderly, mm -hmm. all manner of things. And I think... Where I'm, 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 as a legislator, where, I'm, where I think that the, where the rubber meets the road is that these are we are addressing repressive laws which affect the common man each and every day, mm. and that's why I'm, I'm very hopeful and uh, very optimistic mm. that this law will see the light of the day in the in the, in the floor of the house because we'll be talking to the people because that, that, that kind of that's the kind of complaints we get each and each and every day, and 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 and, and you said it. Um, uh, um, where we also need to look into is on the area of punishment. Uh, it, it does. Does it mean that every petty offence that one has to go to jail? Hmm. Which mm. one is something I have uh, to ask? Uh, let's, take break. Break. Uh, let's take a break. Let's take a break. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break. Twenty-six minutes to eight. We are having a conversation about review of the Penal and Criminal Procedure Codes to align with the Constitution of Kenya, twenty ten. Our guest in the studio this morning, the Honourable Lady Justice Grace Ngenye, Judge of the Court of Appeal and Chair of the NCAJ Committee on Criminal Justice Reforms, and the Honourable Wakili. Edward Moreu, he is a Gatanga MP and a member of the National Assembly's Justice and Legal Affairs Committee. Keep it here for more. Good morning. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. It's critical that people pay taxes, but then taxation has to have a limit. When you start overtaxing people beyond certain limit, then this is now we call robbery with violence. 
We are all struggling, but we don't show. If you're not doing well, shame on you. But you have to say, I'm broke and I'm struggling. <laughs> we are not okay until everybody is it's okay. okay. <laughs> we are pretending to have political parties. Why don't we just be honest? And we say, these are the lawyers, these are the Kambas, these are the Kikuyus, and we are find ourselves in Kenya. You know, with, with politics and leadership, no matter what you do, <laughs> there will always be a complaint. <laughs> There will always be the assumption that you're either stealing or you're not doing things right. As a dear, don't fear. If you know you're doing the right thing, you've thought about it, you've got an expert advice, do it, then understand later. This country, we don't need prayers. Prayers mm. is between you and God. Good governance and thinkers who care about the country and not their stomach. That's what we need. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, sunny Nairobi. This morning at 15, highs of 27 and lows of 14 in Nairobi. It's sunny at 14 in Nakuru with highs of 25 and we'll see highs of 26 in a sunny area at 14. 15 and sunny in Eldoret with highs of 24 and highs of 20, 31 rather in a sunny Mombasa coming down to lows of 24. 24 and sunny in Malindi with highs of 31 and it's mostly cloudy at 20 in Ka Kisumu with highs of 28. Kakamega will see highs of 27. It's currently cloudy at 18. 19 and cloudy in Kampala with highs of 25. And Dar es Salaam is mostly sunny at 25, going to highs of 30. It's 15 and cloudy in Johannesburg with highs of 22 and lows of 13. While Lagos is cloudy at 25, we'll see highs of 31 and highs of 33. In a partly cloudy Kinshasa, currently at 24. Spice up your life. All right, we're getting into traffic all right about now, and there's still busy nests coming in from Jogo Road through towards Landis and out towards Kamkunji. Very heavy traffic coming in from South Sea Nairobi West going towards the Nyaya Stadium roundabout and then out towards Uhuru Highway. It's also coming in heavy on the Thicker Super Highway this morning, um, well past the Outer Ring Junction, and before that, um, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, we're looking at several lanes on Kiambu Road, so that's pretty heavy uh, traffic and it has to do, we have to wait out for that one to open up. James Gishoro is spilling over towards Waiaki Way, so there's heavy traffic there. Uh, Kitisuru, United Nations Avenue, coming in from Whispers on Ruaka Road and then through to Limuru Road, that's also looking busy right about now. So the city is abuzz with activity. Where are you? Stuck somewhere? Let us know. We can give you an alternate route or if you find one this morning, let us know. Spice FM KE on X. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Right. News. You're talking about review of the penal and criminal procedure codes to align with the constitution. Our guest, the Honorable Lady Justice Grace Ngenye and the uh, Honorable Wakili Edward Moreu, who is the member of the National Assembly representing the good people of Katanga constituency. City, before the break, you had a question. Mm. In fact, it uh, aligns very well with what uh, uh, her leadership uh, was talking about when we were off air. Mm. Everything I'm hearing is that this penal code has to be overhauled completely. And we're looking at the harm that it causes where, as it was intended to actually bring about order and something good. But then there's something else about anything that, from what I hear, is this harmful. Those who operationalize it, those who are given the mandate to put it in place, they do not escape unscathed. If a law, a penal code traumatizes people, those who apply it are equally traumatized, if not brutalized. Because if you're constantly applying something repressive, you are involved in that process, it also changes you 
and you become something that ordinarily you are not. And now that segues into what her ladyship was talking about with regards to mental health. When you find the people who have been involved in applying this penal code, you only need to look at how Kanjo officers treat hawkers. You just need to witness it once. And you marvel. If you look at the way some of our security officers go about their business and how they treat the lowly and the least and the most vulnerable, you have to ask, how are we going to handle the mental effect that this penal code has had on those who are trained to apply it? The leadership, over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, let me say this. Uh, change come uh, because of circumstances. Yes. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, going back to uh, our history, <laughs> Latif and uh, City, we did not know how to dress formally and in the suit that you see me dressed in, isn't mm -hmm. it? <laughs> we had a form of, we, we had our own suits. Uh, uh, yeah, we had our own suits, yeah. uh, uh, Exactly, we had our own suit, but not the suit we are wearing, isn't yes. it? Yes. So what I'm saying is this, you know, these uh, books you see us reading, called, called The Cause and many other things, uh, came with somebody, we did not have them. Mm. So they were imposed on us, and uh, placed on our tables and we started reading them mm -hmm. and for your information uh, kenya is a jurisdiction that applies the common law so the laws that you see us applying comes uh, come from britain mm -hmm. that is what we call the common uh, jurisdiction mm -hmm. common law jurisdiction so w what am i saying is that uh, we were brought these laws and as we became modern, and, and I'm not saying that we were primitive, but as we became <laughs> evolved mm. <laughs> into the white man's ways, we adopted their laws. Mm. <laughs> as simple as that. Mm. So uh, we read their law and we continue to read their laws. Mm. So then circumstances keep changing and we see that these laws or whatever it is that we started applying is not suiting our circumstances mm. and therefore we have to change it. Uh, so CT, that is the answer to, to your question. So uh, currently, uh, the penal code is not being overhauled as one section to the, la the first section to the last section. Mm -hmm. It is only that that does not suit us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that is where I was coming from. Mm. So whatever we, th we see is not in accord uh, with our constitution, we are going to change it. Just as Honorable Mureu said, for instance, at the chapter 4, the Bill of Rights, mm. we have uh, a provision at the Article 49 2H mm. uh, of that constitution that currently bail is available to every accused person. Yes. But when you go to the penal code, we find that some offenses are not bailable. Mm. Don't you think we need to change that to accord it uh, with what the constitution provides? Yes. That is what exactly uh, what we, we are talking about. Number two now, coming down to your uh, issue on um, uh, mental health. We, we have now come to know that uh, persons who are mentally unwell are not what we call mad people. Mm. You know, insane. Insane presupposes that, you know, this basic thing mad mm. you've gone haywire mm. uh, to, to just uh, speak in simple words so we know that these are people who are sick mm. and uh, now with 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 the view to aligning uh, the penal code and the criminal procedure code to accord with the medical care that these uh, 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 people require, we are going to amend, one, the use of the derogatory words, number one. Number two, the manner in which we deal with the mentally unwell persons. Okay. So what are we saying? We are going to involve from the date that you take the plea and the court is of the view that this is a mentally ill person. Mm. You rope in an expert and these are psychiatrists who are going to assess this person and are going to give a review of their mental status. So much so that if a medical expert is of the view that this is a person who cannot take plea and this is a person who committed an offense when they were mentally unwell. Honestly, is it a person you can try? Mm -hmm. No. So the right thing to do is to discharge such a person. Uh, that is mm. uh, uh, just uh, uh, mm. one minute to discharge such a person. Okay. Mm. So if, for instance, they may have gone through the trial process and the court comes to a final decision that when they committed the offense, and of course with the help of the medical expert, that they were not in a position to know 
that what they were doing was wrong. Mm. The current state of the law is that the court is supposed to enter what we call a plea of guilty, but plea but insane. Okay. And you are required to be detained at the president's pleasure. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean? Mm. We ro have roped in the executive. The president is an executive person. is mm. not a judicial officer nor a judge. So we have roped in the executive to play the role of the judiciary or a, a judicial officer or a judge. Mm -hmm. So we want to remove that portion so that you cannot be detained at the president's pleasure. Neither can the court enter a plea of guilty but insane because at the time you committed the offense, you are not in a position <coughs> to know that what you are doing is wrong. The only right thing to, that can be done is that you should be acquitted. And further to that? And after you are acquittal, mm. then we the, the question that now has become very problematic, where do you take this person? Yes. Because you have acquitted them. Yeah. Of course, we have the family and we ought to have called for what we call social inquiry reports so that they are brought to the court and the court would know where to you know, take this person, immediately they are acquitted. The most unfortunate thing is this. Mm. For those people who have been mentally unwell for so long a period, the family members don't want them. Exactly. And uh, yesterday I was in a session where I was inducting newly uh, appointed uh, magistrates. And that question arose. Secondly, I have been called by so many judicial officers because they think also that I have all the solution to some of these questions and they are having such persons yeah. who cannot understand proceedings and their family members are also not willing to take them in. So what, how do we deal with them? As the chair of this committee, I may not have a full answer. The thing is this, I've provided a framework and of course through the consultation on how we can deal with them, but they are a reject in, 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 in court. Yes. So what now we are proposing to do is uh, to uh, write a cabinet uh, a memo uh, which uh, through the chair of the NCAJ, that is the Honorable the Chief Justice, can hand it over to the executive and a middle home can be established by the government where these persons now can be confined because nobody wants them. And they can get all the facilities that they want, be it medical, be it sanitation, be it housing, in a manner that is humane and can cater to them. I think, Latif, there's nothing better than that that we can do. And, and why do we mandated. say that? The state should be mandated to take care of these vulnerable people. They are mandated currently, but in circumstances that are not humane. Why do I say that? Currently, persons who are either convicted but found guilty but insane are rotting at the Madari Maximum uh, Security Unit. Madari, mm. uh, currently National Madari referral, Teaching and Referral Hospital. Mm. And nobody <coughs> goes to look for them. Nobody goes to look after them. Mm. If you visit that unit, Latif, you will shed tears. It is in such a deplorable condition. The roofs are leaking. The beds are not in good uh, situation. And, and you know, they survive by the day, judge, by the mercy. The, the risk here mm. is that the state will transfer them from that facility into this new one that you're asking the cabinet to create. And it will be the same. I, I don't think so, uh, Latif. It will not be the same because the Ministry of Health, even currently, because there was a task force mm. uh, that uh, was uh, that uh, was established by the Honourable the, the Attorney General uh, that came up with a proposal that there be a framework and policy guidelines created by the Ministry of Health uh, on a policy on dealing with persons who are mentally unwell. So much so that if this institution is established, it will have guidelines on how to cater for them in a humane manner, okay. rather than take them to uh, a purported mental medical institution, but nobody looks after them. If we have regulations, if we have a policy, these are persons who will live not only in a decent institution, but also in a, a human, humane uh, circumstances yes, and I'm, conditions. I'm actually glad you are chairing this commission. <laughs> Thank you. The passion you have. <laughs> I have it. You no, know, you, you have it by the bucket load and, yes. and it's necessary because, yes. forgive us, we are a bit cynical about such things and for good reason. Hmm. Because time and time again, we see good proposals, mm. something is put up, mm. and that is like the end of it. Yeah, that is very true. The very thing that is supposed to make it work, the end result is supposed to produce 
is not seen. Mm -hmm. But when someone has the energy and the enthusiasm, at least we can go beyond this barrier that we keep seeing because yeah. there is need to go beyond the barrier. You see, mm -hmm. If the government understood, and it ought to, and it's been stated and studies have been done, task forces have been set, Madari would not be in the state it's in. Just for yes. starters, hmm. it would not be. Without a doubt, without a doubt. But I think, again, um, uh, just to, to push that conversation, uh, and you know what you're doing right now, we are doing a public participation. Even in this, what you're doing here in, in this, in this, in the spice, mm -hmm. is a public participation because we are sensitizing our people on the new changes which are forthcoming. And uh, why I'll vote for this bill when it comes for the House is again because it has decriminalized uh, certain aspects and, and thrown them to what you call the civil realm from a criminal realm to civil realm. Um, and I give a, maybe a simple example, a libel, um, that is uh, defamation in, 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 the civil, in the civil side, has been a criminal offense. Uh, you can go to jail for defaming someone because libel is a criminal meaning for the defamation. Mm. Uh, and I think, again, it was meant, it, it was meant to cater certain, for certain aspects those days, but I think it has been overcome by time. Mm. And uh, the proposal before us right now is that we need to confine libel, the defamation. In, in law, we call it tortious mm. liability, mm. Mm. Um, whereby you need to prove uh, beyond reason of doubt that uh, the damage has been occasioned to your name and the personality. Mm. Um, the failure to pay debts, it is in the penal code. It's, it's a crime. It's a criminal. You can you can go to jail for failing to pay debt, mm. and yet uh, it is not a crime against a person. It's, it's, it's a is a it's an economic uh, situation. Mm. Um, again, it's repelling to move it away from being a crime uh, mm. into a civil. It's, it, it, it was, it's a civil matter, um, and you know. Uh, and, and just to, just to bring the the the, um, the 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 rubber to the to the to the tar mm. is that you have situations whereby the police on uh, not 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 on very few occasions but many occasions whereby they arrest you because you are given money by certain mm. person yep. uh, and you're not able to pay mm. and that's what they use they use the penal code mm. uh, say look uh, under this uh, section of the penal code uh, failing to pay debt mm. is a criminal it is offensive there is no way police have no role in doing debt collection is that the one they call obtain uh, by force force we text <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes that is it that's it that's a debt that's a debt situation which you're giving a policeman uh to to coerce you and put you in in, in, the, in the cells and tell you look we shall talk when uh, when when um when 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 you, when you pay this debt mm. um something else very interesting urinating in public areas mm. is a criminal offense mm. on your way home when you find this too much and you stand by the road purely because the government has or, not or the county has not provided for yes. a, a place to relieve yourself uh, it's also a crime and that's again it has to be it has to be repealed what i'm trying to say long and short is this um I, I, I'm not laboring at all mm. on, on, on the proposals which has been brought by mm. the NCAJ because they are addressing the common man and, and little annoyances which happen in, 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 in each and every day. Mm. Number two, the repealing is bringing what you call the humanness in the criminal justice. It's not all about you are being caught on this, Therefore, you're supposed to pay a fine or go to jail. It's, it's just understanding the, the human psychology. And I'm, I'm very happy that um, uh, the, the mental illness here, uh, study has been done c c critically to address the, 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 the issues which um, are criminalized in, in, the, in the penal code, in the, in the, in the sense that um, it's not a, a normally the omnibus. Mm. But by, by you being told, told you are insane, they, they, you find that the penal code is interrogating when you say you're insane, what are you talking about? Mm. Is it is it a state of health mm. or is it a state of crime? Mm. 
Um, and, and therefore, I want to ask a question as we conclude. You know, 60 years after independence, with an independent government, because we're saying this this um, penal code and the, the criminal procedure code were brought in to us by the colonial masters and they had an agenda. But our governments have not been repealing these things. Even now, even as NCAJ is working towards this, it's 10 years after promulgation of the constitution. That's when we are seeing these laws coming in. How do we trust that the players in state who like the control that this criminal procedure code and the, and the penal code has given them will let go? How do we trust that even what is contained in this bill will not get some amendments that will still favor those that want to hold on to the levers of power and control over the weak and meek? I think, um, just to answer your question, the growth of jurisprudence, and that is the growth of the law, the relations, the law and order in any uh, organized society is an ongoing process. It's work in progress. Mm -hmm. Um, even 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 democracies which are a thousand years today, they still they still have a parliament which keep, keep repealing, amending laws to suit situation because nothing is static. Everything continues to evolve. Um, and a good example is what we have right now. We have, a, as you said, we have a constitution which is about ten years now. Um, thirteen. And, uh, thirteen years uh, and, and 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 counting. Um, Remember, the, the, the constitution is supposed to serve generations. And in fact, and I said when I saw in my opening remarks, I said, um, we, this repealing amendment and, and, and the change of the penal code is breathing law, breathing life into the constitution. And a good example, um, I think uh, just as I mentioned about the children's rights, um, uh, Article 53 is very powerful on the rights of the children. If a child happens to be in the mix when, um, either when she's in the stomach of the mother, when the mother has been committed to jail, the question is, uh, when she's born, is mm. he supposed to live in prison because the mother mm. was imprisoned? Mm. And, 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 and that's why you find that that, that has really changed. <laughs> Secondly, um, again, you just also to, to say, say this, Article 53, and, I've, and, and just, just to see where we are coming from, uh, CT, uh, children's rights, like for example, yesterday, I, I, uh, I, I, on a motion which I sponsored in Parliament, mm. um, simple thing like feeding program for our schools has never been implemented. Article 53, uh, Article 53, 1C, 1B and C states clearly, number one, every child is entitled to compulsory be to quality basic education. And C, it says, Every child is entitled to quality nutrition. So quality education and quality, and quality nutrition. nutrition goes hand in hand. And that's why you find a man like Moi you had seen very far. Uh, me and me and Grace most likely we we, we, we were enjoyed the maziwa <laughs> yanyayo. And maybe just let me just finish. Let me just finish yes. um, yesterday we, uh, on a motion which I exposed in the parliament, mm. we passed a motion that the government must factor in not only providing the quality education but also quality nutrition. nutrition so when you're capitating money to support that child in primary school you should feed them as well in 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 in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, junior secondary school mm. you must also provide the food mm. okay thank you very much for joining us imagine the time runs out this fast when you have a lot you know, to say just as well have to like say 30 seconds of 30 something seconds of a dead something. sentence yes, yes. 30 seconds, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, uh, City and uh, Muheshimiwa. I, I think, uh, just give me another 30 minutes to say something. Minutes? Uh, seconds. Seconds, eh? 30 <laughs> seconds, yeah? <laughs> 30 seconds to say something. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, just with respect to the petty offences, huh? and uh, he said uh, some of them are already codified in the, the, the law of tort, that is civil law. For instance, the offence of bigamy, we don't need it there because if uh, City, uh, your wife feels that you have married an another wife uh, somewhere there at Kamukunji. 
<laughs> I think that I just file a divorce really shouldn't be taken to the police and officer and, uh, uh, yes and, uh, and 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 charged mm. uh, num- number two uh, before I get to the death sentence is that uh, Mweshimiwa is mean I think they have already taken up uh, this bill he should have de- made material disclosure <laughs> and that these uh, bills are going to be fronted in parliament by by, by JLAC mm. after a consultative forum we have done a lot of consultation and uh, public uh, sensitization okay. so we are happy so when he talks about uh, these amendments they own it and they feel us uh, then coming to the death uh, uh, sentence I said one thing we are responding uh, to not only the change of circumstances in our society but also to the growing jurisprudence that is cases decided by the court to which we respond against the death sentence you know the big case of uh, Muruateto Mm. And the Supreme Court pronounced itself and said that death sentence under Section 204 of the Penal Code is not a mandatory sentence. It could be the maximum. So we have to align our Penal Code uh, to the uh, current jurisprudence. And of course, we know we have proponents of total abolition of the death sentence. And yep. of course, there is a bill. We know that. Mm. But uh, we are hoping that if we can merge this and further do public sensitization, then people can say whether do they really want the total abolition of the death sentence or do they want it to be capped as a maximum, as a maximum. sentence and also define what life sentence is mm. we have done that okay. so that people are not placed in the prisons for an indeterminate uh, sentence i mean time that is to say until you die mm. is that humane you that do is not a life, that's a death penalty exactly it's as good as yeah. death penalty so really lativ i wish we could take this conversation further and i hope we, we will. can come again and uh, continue we will thank we you very much also as it continues <laughs> into the second reading in the national assembly yes. we'll have these conversations Asante. judge thank you very much for joining us the honorable lady justice grace ngenye is a judge of the court of appeal and chair of the committee on criminal justice reforms of the national council on administration of justice the honorable wakili edward moreo is the mp for katanga constituency and a member of the national assembly's justice and legal affairs committee it's a justice thursday conversation good morning two minutes after eight Spice up your life. Services in the country. It's critical that people pay taxes. But then, taxation has to have a limit. When you start overtaxing people beyond certain limit, then this is now we call robbery with violence. We are all struggling, but we don't show. If you're not doing well, shame on you. But you have to say, I'm broke and I'm struggling. <laughs> we are not okay until everybody is it's okay. okay. We are pretending to have political parties. Why don't we just be honest? And we say, these are the Luhias, these are the Kambas, these are the Kikuyus, and we are find ourselves in Kenya. You know, with, with politics and leadership, no matter what you do, <laughs> there will always be a complaint. <laughs> there will always be the assumption that you either stealing or you're not doing things right for as a dear don't fear if you know you're doing the right thing you thought about it you've got an expert advice do it then understand later this country we don't need prayers prayers mm. is between you and god 102.5 spice fm kisumu If you go out of this country and come back the same person, then you have a problem. Buy land, one million. Put it there for five years. What's the purpose? It will have increased in value. No, that's the thing. That's darkness. You know, that's an eclipse. <laughs> you don't do that. I hope you don't believe that Hasla is a poor person or that Asla, all Hasla's are poor. I've seen that conversation. Tell across. us, who is that? Hasla? Who is yeah. Hasla? Hasla is a person who is uh, making his, a living through hard work. Corruption in Kenya is a political accusation. The people who are actually corrupt are not pointed fingers at. Kenya is not free. Mm. Kenya in Mexico and Amateka is under siege. 
Have you seen that lodge on Nanyerere Road? Very high fence, you can't even Windows see inside. Windows up near the ceiling. Yeah. Yes. <gasps> and if you walk that at midnight, you see bats the size of cows. <laughs> <laughs> and when it rains, it doesn't rain on that building. Yes. <laughs> when you're at All Saints mm. and it's raining, <laughs> it doesn't rain on that building. <laughs> Spice FM, Nakuru. Revenge is for children. Mm. It's for kids. When you grow up, you realize the best revenge you, you can take on somebody is to ignore them. Now I'm just new in politics. Mm. It is not everybody's cup of tea. That's why some people come in one time and that's it for them. Political parties in this country do not have ideologies, whether luring or otherwise. And that is the effect of corruption. Any time an offense occurs anywhere in the country, it is the job of the Inspector General to look into it. Whether it's corruption, whether it's murder, whether it's betting, that is his job. If we have chosen to be a corrupt nation, then we produce corrupt leaders. Everything then becomes chaotic that you cannot be able to change a nation. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. All right, so a few minutes after 8 o'clock, traffic still continues in the city. Uh, we're looking at it heavy coming off the thicker super highway, then into the CBD. It's also very heavy on Kiambu Road now. That looks like those are our spots today. Langata Road, inbound traffic is heavy. And coming in on Magadi Road as well, we're looking at that pretty heavy um, coming into the city. All right, this whole area then coming in from North Airport Road, going towards um, Cabanas, out towards Utawala, and then that Roy Junction, also pretty busy right about now. Let's keep an eye on things and see how it happens into traffic hour proper spice of mke on x let's talk there and keep things moving this morning this is the situation room the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room, morning, the only to way to start your day. Conversation, the Situation Room is eight minutes after eight. We are still live on Spice of M and KTN Home and YouTube and Facebook. After this Justice Thursday conversation, let's go into a Mount Kenya Thursday conversation. <laughs> Before we do that, 20th edition of the Standard Chartered Nairobi Marathon mm. happens on the 29th of oh, October. Right. Hmm. So the question is, where will you be? Mm. Have you registered? So it just keeps telling me he'll register. I will. I mean, I will. No, when I register. When I register. So mm. you ask yourselves, how exactly will you do that? How will you register? Log on to www.nairobimarathon.com. You pay 2,000 shillings and then you get all the paraphernalia that you need to be able to participate in the race come the 29th. Um, and then it's not just for you. It's for a lot of people who are involved in the Future Makers program. Mm -hmm. And it gives young people, especially girls and those with disability, the chance to learn, to earn and grow. So I remind you the address, www.nairobimarathon.com. You register with 2,000 shillings. Participate in the 20th edition of the Nairobi Standard Chartered Marathon. Let's do it. It's the 29th. Let's go. Kabisa, kabisa. Also, watch out for the 23rd of the uh, this same same month because this is the day when a new show premieres on Maisha Magic Plus. It's called Zari. It'll be airing from the 25th Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 8.30 p.m. on Maisha Magic Plus. Maisha Magic Plus is found on DSTV and Go TV. Also, what premiered on Monday this week is another show called Kasiri. All these are local productions, Kenyan productions that are doing very, very well in all our stations. 7.30 p.m., 
every Monday, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, you'll find Kasiri on Maisha Magic Plus. Very, very good shows that you need to just watch and, you know, you need to make sure that you subscribe to Channel 163, DSTV Channel 163 and uh, Maisha Magic, Go TV Channel 3. That's where you find Maisha Magic Plus. You can dial star 423 hash or download my DSTV or my Go TV apps. Uh, get or stay connected and watch this very very good shows we're now joined by the member of parliament a former member of parliament for nyeri town constituency the honorable gunjiri wambogo he's here today because we want to talk about tigers or oh, unity of all animals and humans animal farm and mount kenya yes <laughs> <laughs> you know it's all about all things is hyenas leopards cheetahs tigers Sure than 80. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Mashima, good morning. Good morning, Eric. How Welcome are you? to Kenya's big. It's good to have you again on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation. Karibu Tana. Asante. Asante. City has the day's proverb. I do. Uh, City, this proverb is from Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it isn't in Kiswahili, mm. technically in the English language. Okay. Yes. The bitterness of a son is known by the parents. Mm. The bitterness of a son is known mm. by the parents. Mm. Nijiri, mm -hmm. do you get what the Tanzanians are saying with this? No, I'm still surprised that it's in English. Oh, <laughs> it was made. It was translated to English for your benefit. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's just for you. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. The bitterness of a son is known by the parents. It's deep. I'm sure. You just don't get it. No. <laughs> Neither do I. Honestly. <laughs> this Absolutely. One, this one passes like, me like that. Yeah. Son, son. It sounds deep. Son Mutoto. Mm. Not son Jua. Mm -hmm. Bitterness known by the parents. Bitterness here being... And emotion. You know, riddles not are not, riddles are not supposed to be obvious. <laughs> no. uh, my assumption is they're not supposed to be obvious. Hey. But ask yourself the question mm. if something bothers a child, let's take the view that the expression of bitterness is as a result of something that the child is an. And child here doesn't have to mean a toddler, mm. just an offspring. Mm. Would the parents not know? Because if the expression of it has consequences, mm it will eventually get to the parents. And the burden of, if you take the bitterness and you take the view that it probably causes transgression, mm. at the end of the day, the burden will fall on the parents. You know what, Siti, and I'm laughing. Please. Because there's somebody called Brian who is actually saying, this is just wrong interpretation or translation. The Swahili version of this is probably Uchungu wa Mwana Yes. Which has nothing to do with the bitterness yes. of a child. You see, <laughs> that is the beauty again of the proverb, mm. as Mushmiwa said. <laughs> see, somebody comes up and says, you see, translated into English, the meaning may have been lost in translation. Mm. So now, uchungu in Kiswahili means pain. Mm. Now, bitterness, if you are to be synonymous, is also pain. So, Maybe we just agree that they are two different problems. And Probably. let's take the, the Swahili version. Swahili version. Yes, Uchungu wa mwana, yes, Uchungu wa mwana. yes exactly. Now that one at least that you can relate. Sense. That one okay. I can relate. Kabisa. Okay, so yeah, yeah. interpret for us that one. Uchungu wa mwana, Uchungu wa mwana, I guess the, it would mean that the challenges a child faces, or a child goes through, or a child uh, brings, are best understood by the parent. Mm -hmm. So Uchungu is comprehensive from mm -hmm. the pain of birth, the pain of bringing up a child, the 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 challenges that a child yes challenges the child goes through life, mm -hmm. plus also the challenges that a child might bring into life mm -hmm. are best understood by a parent. Okay, in my limited understanding. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Now, something has been happening. A, con a national conversation has been taking place lately. Started uh, somewhere and then has gone into 
uh, the deputy president and the deputy president says you know what as mount kenya we need to speak with one voice and in fact i'm going to reach out to huru kenyatta the former president he is still a son of the mountain and a leader of this region and we're going to have a conversation let's bring all leaders together and the entire community together we speak in one voice mm -hmm. and among the people who have taken up that voice is gunjiri wambogo and says yeah 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 but the way we need to speak in one voice what is this speaking in one voice gunjiri <laughs> Actually, I have not just taken up the voice. It's been a consistent position. Once you understand how Kenyan politics is done mm. and how Kenyan politics is operationalized and how mobilization for Kenyan politics is done, there is really no alternative than that particular position. But let me first start with a preamble. Every time Mount Kenya has this conversation about united, uniting, there seems to be, I don't know what negative vibe goes out, specifically when it's Mount Kenya who says it. Mm. But when Northeastern, for example, they actually have a very serious and very structured pastoralist coalition mm -hmm. that brings together all the uh, political leadership from that particular region. Mm -hmm. Western Bloc, for example, have unity calls all the time. I mean, they hold rallies uh, when Musalia and Wetangula were on different sides of the political divide. There were elders, including Akina mm. demanding that they sit together and come up with a unified position for their region, mm -hmm. coast region, um, Nyanza province. So for some reason, we've never really understood why it becomes a problem when Mount Kenya says, guys, we need to actually go behind the tent as a region and think. Uh, the, the fact that the deputy president has now, part of, part of the reason this has become an interesting conversation is because he said he's going to reach out to the former president, uh, based on the history that they have had. But then, that is the power of regional interests. At a certain point, your personal interests must be subsumed by regional interest. Um, the deputy president and the former president had a very acrimonious relationship uh, for couple of years uh, towards the last election mm. um, and of course uh, th there's always people who take different sides of that blame mm. uh, the people who will say it was uh, Riga Dikashagwa's fault because he was attacking the president mm. Riga Dikashagwa will say it was Uhuru's fault or people who support Riga will say it was Uhuru's fault mm. because he had uh, dev deviated from the arguments that we had or towards the direction we were supposed to take mm. but that's all now been overtaken by the fact that we have Rigadi Gashago as the senior most political leader mm. of the region and uh, Uhuru Kenyatta as, as retired president from the region. Uh, and if you're going to have a unified conversation, these two leaders must come together. Actually, I said this early this year, mm. and, and, and it was one of the times when I was suggesting that it's about time for us to put elections behind us. Mm. We had a very acrimonious, acrimonious relationship within our community, yeah. within the region. Um, towards the 2022 elections uh, but give it to him uh, uh, when the deputy president says he managed to mobilize 87 percent of the people who voted from the mount kenya region to vote for his preferred candidate mm. it's a fact mm. and that's a fact that we have to recognize mm. um, and when you're when you come from that region and you're a democrat you have to accept that the the, the region had a choice between to go with mother karua which which is where uhuru kenyatta preferred we go or Rigadi Gashago. And the region chose to go with Rigadi Gashago. So the region spoke with one voice. The, the region, 87% of the region spoke does with one voice. Does one voice mean 100%? Not or necessarily. Or does one voice mean a majority? One voice means a majority. Okay. But then also, that there's no limit to that majority. You, the, Would the, you say 87% is sufficient majority? I actually, mean, it, it's a super majority. 87% is a super majority. So the region but that doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean you can't get the 13% who didn't speak with that voice and listen and find out, by the way, why didn't you guys come to our side? Mm. That part of that 13% includes people like Gujiri Wambogo, mm. who are not part of the 87% at that time. Mm. And you most probably want to find out, okay, are you guys, the other actually, Uhuru Kenyatta is also part of the 13% mm. that did not vote. So when, when Rigadi says, I'm going to reach out 
to Uhuru Kenyatta. I suspect he's also saying he's going to reach out to Gojiri, he's going to reach out to this 13% at 11,000 people in Nyeri town who did not vote for UDA. Mm. And uh, they come from that particular constituency by itself. So they are part of the people he's most probably trying to reach out to. Why must the region speak with one voice? Is that not curtailing the whole idea of democracy, of openness, of ideas, of uh, encouraging and accepting divergent opinions and views? Why must we speak with one voice? And who's, who's deciding which voice? Actually, uh, this is the most democratic way you can go. Having, first, is let's it? start from the country coming down once. Because it's important for us to, to be honest when we analyze that particular call. As Kenyans, we say we want to speak with one voice. As Kenyans. On issues. When you want to talk about taxes, you want to talk about the finance bill, you want to talk about various things. There's a call, can we have one voice? Can we have one position on this issue? As Kenyans. Mm. So I don't see why would have why asking people from a particular region that is part of that country and asking them to have one common position on an issue is undemocratic because part of it is also in encouraging everybody to come bring your position and let's take the one that wins and that then becomes a common position uh, remember mm. we are we are, we, are, we, we it's a marketplace of ideas eh? Mm. This doesn't mean that Gunjiri cannot come with his idea. Mm. Rigadi comes with his, Uhuru comes with his, somebody else comes with his. Then when we go to the place where we are going to sit as a region, mm. and I push my agenda mm. and you push yours, and I argue my point and you argue yours, we, are, we assume that the region is intelligent enough to pick the best idea of the five, or even combine several of those ideas into one idea that then you present to the rest of the country. And you say, you know what, as a region, these are the issues that are important to us. We are a generally agricultural community. We do business. We would like this kind of enabling environment created for us as a region. And then Western does the same thing. And, and this is a point I want to emphasize. The fact that Mount Kenya is coming together to speak with one voice doesn't mean other regions cannot do the same. In fact, it makes it easier, ultimately, to have a common position. Because you have a common, posi a common position for Mount Kenya, Western has a common position, Coast has a common position, and then those ideas again come to a marketplace at a national level, and ultimately you agree what being Kenyan is actually all about. You know, this conversation is being had as though what you're saying has not existed before. Has that not been the very definition of our politics? Yes, it has. Yes. So what exactly are we saying is new now? Because in all honesty even with the fragmentation and the differences that you speak of, they've been manifested even as we've gone about our business of politics. Because you will find there is no region in this country that doesn't have representation of more than one party. There's none. In fact, one could argue that Central Kenya has been one of the most accommodating regions when it comes to the divergence of political parties. True. Yes. True. But again, that doesn't mean you cannot speak in one voice. Yes. Actually, you're making my point. Mm. I, I know I am making your point. <laughs> Thank you and very I'm, much. And, and I'm asking, <laughs> you see, let's go back to what I asked before. Yes. This discussion is taking place against a backdrop of something that has been our lived experience. Mm. But now, if I look at the discussion, it's like it's something new. And I'm saying it is not something new. Mm. No, it's not at all. It, it, it actually hasn't been. Gojiri, why is it important to have a group of people united by ethnicity to coalesce around a certain idea. Why is it important to do that and put that against the backdrop of national unity? Why is it important to have one group of people because they were from the same place be of one voice? First, it assumes, and I say this very loosely, it assumes that that particular ethnicity has common interests. Right, mm -hmm. um, and again, I'm going to keep trying to throw this outside Mount Kenya so that we put it in context. Mm -hmm. When the president, for example, visits Western Province, mm -hmm. the leadership of Western Province comes together and says, "We want you to write off our sugar um, debt." Debt. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the leadership that said that don't necessarily come from the same political party, but they say they come from the same region. region. Mm -hmm. And what we have done, and that's why I said that my first statement when I started speaking about this was, we must first accept and understand how we mobilize politically as a country. Mm -hmm. And that is how you then understand 
why Musalem Mudavadi is a prime cabinet secretary mm. in the Kenya Kwanza government mm -hmm. because you would need to be able to make the western bloc actually the Luya specifically mm. feel that they are part of this government mm -hmm. because if you don't do that then you the, you are going to have a very large chunk of our of our country feeling like this is not the government the reason Eludowalo is a cabinet secretary in Kenya Kwanza despite the fact that Kenya Kwanza did not get uh, a, a, a noticeable vote block in Nyanza is because there you must make the, when Aluo sits in Kenya and looks at the television and sees the cabinet secretary is representing cabinet he must see Aluo if he doesn't see Aluo he doesn't feel Represented. represented and that is the reality of our politics now so once you start from that point mm -hmm. then you now come to the next level when the president goes Mujeri, to Nyanza I, I really have to add something here yeah. mm. <laughs> it just can't be any luo mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes uh -huh. I, 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 I'm repeating this. Uh -huh. it can't be there there will be luos who even if you make them cabinet minister yes nobody in Luoland feels that they're represented <laughs> now so, you see, that's an internal conversation. <laughs> no, I needed to set that right. So yes. Now, <laughs> yes. Now you see why that is an internal conversation, because this is a twofold. Mm. It's a twofold presentation mm. that is being done by the government. Mm. Twofold in this matter. When you form that cabinet, the Luos might think that Elu does not represent them, but the rest of the country has seen a Luo. And the rest of the country doesn't necessarily understand the internal dynamics of the Luo community. That's it. That is why this conversation about Mount Kenya unity mm. is interesting because the non Mount Kenya people don't understand the dynamics of the Mount Kenya community and they want to understand okay, you, we live with you guys yeah. in this country. What's going on? Why are you operating as if you're the only guys in this country? No, like, no, 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 no. That's not what we're doing. Mm. We are just doing our own. You're doing your own housekeeping. We are, on, we are doing our own housekeeping. And our housekeeping is because we've come from a very untidy uh, political moment uh, 14 months ago mm. that left our regional leader at that mm. moment mm. and the incoming, you know, the outgoing and incoming completely at, at loggerheads. At loggerheads. So if and for the sake of this community, mm. we need to get these two they have to handle forces yeah. working together because for as long as they're working against each other, it's a community that is suffering. So to have those conversations then is important because the best interests of the community then are what are held up here yes. and making sure that uh, everybody's speaking one voice. So then it would be a very far-fetched idea to say that the community would coalesce around an idea and then for them pick a, a leader outside of the community. So it's not possible to have an somebody outside of the community as the person that has been earmarked or identified as someone that they would want to choose no okay and and uh, it's uh, the simple reality of that is mm. based on for you to in, in the last election yeah both sides of the political divide ended up having a running mate mm -hmm. from the mount kenya region mm -hmm. um and the argument at that moment was this region is one of the most politically aware regions we have in the country mm -hmm. and it's not running a presidential candidate so i go back to my question yes how does this play vis-a-vis the idea of national unity it plays into the idea of national uh, unity if worked in a way that doesn't seem as if you're removing yourselves from the rest of the country mm -hmm. and that's one of the that's the thing i'm trying to make to emphasize here the issue of mount kenya uh, the mount kenya region coming together is not to withdraw themselves from the rest of the country it is actually to create a uh, how do you, to create a paper let me use that Mm -hmm. scholastic argument that you can present to the rest of the country and say look we are part of this country we the, and, and I, I'll, I'll keep going back to western because they they, they did one of the most um tidy ways of doing it when they did their paper on sugar mm. right they came to a president who doesn't necessarily come from the region and told him look we have had a sugar problem uh, sugar thing for a long time. Okay, I, I noticed there was some a small piece that said that now you can't talk about the Mambo ni Matatu. Mm. It's been uh, somebody's trying to. Trying, it's to yeah, own but it that's there. where it came from. Mm. I mean, they took it to they took an argument to him. Yeah, and he said, "I'm going to sort this business." And just by that, he was able because these are the leadership of the region. The assumption is the sugar issue is a very important issue to, to the Western entire Atlanta. region. Mm. Okay. Right now, here's the thing, though. Uh -huh. yeah. When we talk about Mount Kenya, 
who are we referring to we are generally referring to we are assuming that this is a homogeneous community actually we are refer- the, 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 politically you see also yeah. we, we also have to keep politically, being yes, we also have to keep being and who created, it's a way and who created this political actually, again, entity called mount kenya again when we talk about coast region mm. We assume we're talking about the Taita Tavetas, the, uh, Mijikenda, the former, what, 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 Actually, the former pro- you need to be clear. Province. Tavetas yes. are not Taitas. Mm. Tavetas are Tavetas. Okay, Taitas. 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 Yes. Now you see, that's continue. how you keep getting. So when yes. you talk about coast, you are assumed to be talking about the, the indigenous people from communities from the coast region. From the former yes. coast province. While when you go to a place like Mombasa, you find that 40% of the population there is actually Luo. Mm-hmm. Right? But when you talk about the coasts, you are talking about the indigenous communities and luo are not indigenous communities to the to the coast mm-hmm. but the assumption is when they came there they were assimilated to the interests of that particular okay. region okay when you talk about western the assumption is that you're talking about the luyas actually you don't even talk about anybody else mm. but in western you find a lot of kalenjins you find a lot of somalis i was remember in cs amina came from western yeah. as her indigenous as her home actually a justice of the supreme court came from western mm. there you are mm-hmm. and i'm sure they're not luya he's not luya at all there you are he's, 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 but the assumption yeah. politically when you talk about western that you're talking about the luya when you talk about nyanza the assumption is you're talking about the luo mm-hmm. and now the kisis get upset about it because mm-hmm. they're like no the but we are also, also the and the kuriyas get, get very, very upset. upset and then if you go even further you find the suba the suba are not sure then they them are, they're like fat we even bantus mm. they're not even nylots yeah. and you guys are putting us in one basket so when you talk about mount kenya you're talking about the kikuyu the embu the meru primarily but mount kenya region is there's a geographical mount kenya region mm. and then there's a political mount kenya region mount kenya region so in this conversation we're talking about the political, the political mount kenya region, mount kenya region. Yeah, where did this question. concept yes. of the political mount kenya region begin the, the concept of mount kenya region has been with us i think from independence Again goes back to what I said it's how we organize our politics when Jomo Kenyatta was president and he organized Gema and he made the Kikuyu Embu Meru Association a political outfit with Yanga Karume and the works yeah. then Moi went and organized the Kalenjin who actually did not exist and he took the Tugen well, and the Nandi well, and the Kipsigis that, that particular mean, no what I mean let me make it very clear mm. what I mean is that the Tugen the Nandi the Kipsigis were initially individual tribes you do that know then that they are chaos they are pokots and chaos and pokots so and you know pokots don't yes. sometimes consider so now, themselves part of yes so so a political community so say mount called kenya, the kalenjin was also formed by more so we say mount kenya yes. is, is this a concept that was created sometime by some politicians who said okay so these communities of the agekoyo the embu the meru who are neighbors in this region yes. called Mount Kenya yes. form one block yes but they are not homogeneous no in fact even in the, among the kikuyu kiambu muranga nyeri yes. kirinyaga and even parts of nyandarua and lekipia don't necessarily have to speak the same, same way, language same politically. way when you go to Bung- <laughs> when you go to western you find uh, the bukusu and the maragoli when you Let's go to the kalenjin you find the talk- nandi and the kipsigis they keep talking about yes. you know the mulembe nation and yes. the importance of the mulembe nation speaking yes. with one voice yes. they don't why must these people of mount kenya region speak with one voice because That's a question I everybody asking. else is organizing themselves the same way Ooh. so if you, if you have the mulembe nation coming together and working very hard to form a mulembe nation politically then you have the kalenjin forming a kalenjin nation politically and then you have nyanza forming a nyanza nation politically why would you have the mount kenya region not to do the same thing but you know something eh? the question that eric is asking yes. is a very pertinent one eh? yes because this unification you're saying is in western kenya where is it You see now this that is, is what the trolley has been trying to push <laughs> yes i <laughs> mean see, the, all these attempts are because it doesn't, it, it doesn't exist actually the yes. attempts to keep bringing different communities together will not cease in fact ultimately in my though now i've given up about this generation i don't think it's going to happen in our generation i always hoped that would start from the community going up and actually be able to form a nation that we now come together and agree that yes this me this is what i bring gideri to the table you bring fish you bring uh what okay pilau <laughs> chicken <laughs> pilau <laughs> and then somebody else brings chicken, chicken sweet potatoes. and then we have a buffet right 
that was that's that's actually the assumption that's and, and the, music. the advantage yes, yes and yeah, we yeah. with music and you know and but we get a, a bit of camel soup you know but, but i think it doesn't happen you see oh. we that is where we need to get but we, i think we're already there socially yes but you see we are, politically we are not yet yet and that's the whole idea we're trying to work but why towards must we, there why must we be there because we are a political nation for a balanced diet let's take a break for balanced diet yes minutes to nine. To get there. <laughs> 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 former mp for Nyeri town constituency is our guest this morning we are talking about this quest at uh, having mount kenya unity and speaking with one voice politically the deputy president gojiri himself even the last time he was here was saying you know what uh, you jubilee as we are doing all these things in jubilee can we also look at our people who are in you uda and what they're saying can we have one conversation the deputy president now says yes can we actually all speak with one voice including that party what's it called mcc mc moses curious party is called you ilienda ilienda ah mm. So oh. Alifunga. Befolded. Mm. Before, oh yeah, you <laughs> call UDA. Oh, what? Yes. Can we all come together, the various political groupings, and have one common agenda, one common paper, as you say? Let's continue that conversation shortly after this break. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. up your life. 18 degrees, sunny conditions in Nairobi, highs of 26 and lows of 14, and we'll see lows of 13 in a sunny in Akuru at 17. It's 17 and sunny in Nyeri, highs of 26, and we'll see highs of 25 in a sunny Eldoret at 18. Mostly sunny conditions at 27 in Mombasa with highs of 31, and 31 will also be the high in Malindi, where the sun is up at 28. 22 and sunny in Kisumu, going to highs of 29, and we'll see highs of 28 in a mostly cloudy Kakamega at 20. It's 19 and cloudy in Kampala with highs of 25. And Dar es Salaam is sunny at 26, going to highs of 30. It's 15 and sunny in Johannesburg, going to highs of 22. And we'll see highs of 31 in a cloudy Lagos at 24. 24 and cloudy in Kinshasa, highs of 33, down to lows of 24. All right, so, so still in traffic hour. It's still heavy coming off parts of the Fika Superhighway. Some of it then coming around on Kiambu Road. And Limu Road is also pretty busy from what we see right now. That's going to continue for some time. Coming out of Mathaiga and other areas touching on Mathaiga Square. Then going towards Parklands. Um, all the avenues and out towards Wangari Mathai. Whatever happened on Langata Road earlier seems to have reduced significantly. We're just seeing a little bit left of that as you approach the Nyao Stadium roundabout. Coming out of Westerns, also still busy uh, for now. But I think we'll get out of this without too much of a scratch. We'll keep an eye on things and see how it happens. Spice of MKE on X. Let's keep things moving this morning. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. News with Gajiru Mbogo, former MP Nyeri Town, on the issue of political unity in the Mount Kenya region. What shape do you see it taking? Okay, the, the one thing you have to give the Mount Kenya region, um, I guess uh, politically, we tend to be very calculative. Um, and I say that with the example of what has happened in 2022 general elections. Um, we had a president who was a regional leader um, and had been a regional leader actually for close to 20 years, sub to Kibaki, then prime. Um, and at a transition, he tells us to go a certain direction. Um, and the community actually refuses. And they're like, no, we're not going to go the direction you're telling us. Mm. We are going to go this one, mm. this way. Uh, and... It, it, it's not a usual thing. I, I mean, you could hear other people saying, Yeni mnakata, So when you hear th when you hear the calls for the community to sit down, I think what you are going to expect is that there are going to be a lot of surprising decisions. And mm -hmm. one of them is when uh, Rigadi Gashagwa wakes up and says, I'm going to reach out to Uhuru Kenyatta. And everybody's like, ah, what are you talking about? Mm. 
but the reality is that 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 this is a community that on politics at a certain point is able to put emotions aside and decide this is the way we need to go and i hear people saying that but that is just political leadership that is doing that it's not the ordinary wanjiko on the ground that is doing it but it's actually the ordinary wanjiko on the ground that is making the political Who's leadership them do it. that because there's that perception of I, we don't actually you hear it all the time even if you just go to the village and someone tells you we're not very happy we, we, this this fights between you guys mm. are not making us happy and to be only to be your mom to be your neighbor to be somebody at the market mm. just a general conversation of but you guys why can't you sit down if you all come from the same place and you all say you're representing us why aren't you able to sit down and talk with one voice because we assume that yes you have personal differences but those are your differences when you go to the political field you're not going on your personal issues you're going on ours and we have same issues we want our coffee fixed we want our tea fixed we want our milk fixed we want our small business environment created for us why can't you guys go and talk about that mm. and that pressure by default makes the leadership have to see it's rising to the top yeah. it's building up is the region has the region moved on from uhuru kenyatta as being the political leader it has and 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 i say this on this basis even the people actually what we are now having in the region is not a fight about whether uhuru kenyatta is a political leader or not it's a fight about people who accept that he's not and people who haven't because even the people who don't accept that he is not the political leader will complain about rigadi gashagwa as not doing enough for the region oh he's not fixing our coffee he's not fixing our tea but there f- there's nobody uh, there's nobody who is going to tell you that if i have uh, problems mm. that i need solved i'm going to go to huru kenyatta nobody is going to go and do that at this moment in time there is nobody there's no constituency in terms of people groups that whether it is nyamakima group for example or the coffee farmers or the tea farmers or the milk farmers um, and there's nobody who's going to wake up and say that we need we have a problem that we need solved and we want to go to Uhuru Kenyatta it's not going to happen so, so, so that saying, thing is done you're saying that the community has accepted Rigathi Gashagwa as their political now, leader now this is what is happening with Rigathi Gashagwa for you to accept a regional leader there must be the one person who can summon anybody from the region and they come right yes right now the only person who can do that is Rigathi Gashagwa because of his position as because of his position president. as a deputy president He's the only person who can call all the religious leaders from the Mount Kenya region tell them I want us guys to have a meeting and they will come. Who can call all the coffee farmers or all the tea farmers or all the young people or all the women leaders or there has to be if you that person who can do that by default becomes a regional leader because there's nobody else and we have this is can the fact not do that. Who could do it? But then the question a lot of people would be asking that you're calling us so that you do what for us. But and that's why I talked about the calculativeness the calculativeness of our region. When you call for example let me use the Nyamakema region uh, the Nyamakema business community who are dealing with uh, imports and stuff. If today Uhuru Kenyatta called them for a meeting the first question they would ask him is okay so we have these problems how can you help us? Because you have to call us based on the needs that we have. If you call the political leadership of the community today Uhuru can do a mbuzi for us and we'll show up. But we'll show up because we respect him and what he has done for the community, not because of where he's going to take us. Because unfortunately, the taking us has now him he took us to where he could take us. And by default, he has he, actually he also accepted that his time is done. And I say this because not not too many people remember that when when Uhuru Kenyatta was introducing Martha Karua, he said this is a lady I believe can take the community to the next level. So he had already he was already at the point where was handing over. I'm done. Me I've done my part. I've done the best I could for this community. Um and as I transition out, I would like to introduce you to Martha Karua, who again very interesting interestingly wasn't a favorite of Uhuru's if you remember. And neither was Martha uh very Uh, very very close to Uhuru, was Uhuru a favorite of mothers yes but for the sake of where they were going Uhuru thought okay ha the community then the then we had Rigadi been pushed by the Kenya Kwanza side the community 
make a decision, made a decision and went with Rigathi. So, so who is actually case, transitioned out? Sawa. Even he did it for in him. this particular it. case, even as the deputy president says he's going to reach out to Uhuru Kenyatta. Now let's look at the power play here. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is the former political supremo, and this is the incoming. Yes. Who will summon the other? Uh, this is how I expect it would go. I expect that Rigathi Gashagwa would send word to Uhuru Kenyatta, but I, I am for the sake of the how the community would go, I am more inclined to think Rigathi would go to where Uhuru is. Really? Not because first, in recognition of the fact that you are still my senior. It's that thing of, I have been a general at war, I have led this community to war up to this point, I have retired. You are the new general. You are the younger so one. When in more often, more in most cases, they're general. It doesn't mean that your power has gone down. But you are the one on the field at the moment. In fact, you will find that a lot of the times because Uhuru will more will be more of a mentor to Rigadi than a competitor. Is that the case? Because are we not looking? Are we will not be looking at a situation whereby, over the last six months, the very things he has said and they are not private; they're yes. very public. Yes. About Uhuru Kenyatta. Yes. Has not been palatable. Okay, you know, unpalatable at best true. in terms true, of true. the things that he said. True. So for if I from the way optics just says that he would call out to him because he realizes, hold on a minute, I may have mucked up here a little bit and we actually still do need him. Not necessarily because of seniority or rank, but he realized, wait a minute, I may have said a thing or two that I shouldn't have said and we still require him if we're going to do this very same thing that you're talking about. You can add what you're saying. Mm. There are things I need done. And I need his help. Yes, and I may have made a mistake. Without the things him, I have said. these things are not going to get done. Yeah. It, it's, and it goes, it, most, that's most probably part of the conversation. But then let's also use an example that we saw and we're all part of. Uru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga. In the tribe called Kenya. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. This is, this is Rigathi Kashagwa and Uhuru in the tribe called Mount Kenya. Mm. But in the tribe called Kenya, in the bigger picture, we had an exact same scenario happen. Where Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga had said some very unpalatable things about each other. In fact, if I remember, uh, one of the things Uhuru kept saying is how much whiskey they took. Mm. Privately. Just going through the unpalatable issues that they had dealt with. But they dealt with it. Now, I don't, I, I'm, because Rigadi doesn't imbibe, so I don't expect him to do the they whiskey can, thing. People can drink tea. But I'm sure they can do soup. Each can do their thing. Yes. Or each can do their thing. Mm. What I am sure about is that they will sit down mm. and they will have a private conversation and a public conversation. The private conversation could be where, man, how could you tell me stuff like that? But then the public conversation is going to be like, okay, guys, we're moving together. Then let's also remember there's a history between these two gentlemen. Right? Uh, Rigadi Ashawa mm. was taken to Uhuru Kenyatta by Moi as the guy who would teach Uhuru how government works. When U Moi decided that he wanted to make Uhuru Kenyatta president. So they have a relationship of having worked together for over 10 years. So they have a history and worked together well. Yeah. Then politically, they had a fallout. I suspect they have more years of working together well than they the years. They have more in common. They have more, yes, they have more in common than that. That divide. They have more years of being friends than being enemies. And then they are old people. I mean, they are older gentlemen. They are, they, they, for sure, they are not young, hot-blooded people. They are going to be able but to sit down at the table and sit down and agree. Someone being a political ally doesn't make them your friend. True. Because that relationship is one of convenience, as are most alliances. I guess they were friends. Then they did not become allies. And now they have to sit down and figure out how to become allies. Because but, their initial relationship was friendship. But the, the, the salvos that have been fired have not been from Uhuru. Mm -hmm. Uhuru actually retired and kept quiet. If you ask Regatha Gashago, he'll tell you, being arrested in the middle of the night. Yes, in front of your family. And is a serious salvo. That is the manner a very serious salvo. And, and, and you see, there's so much that happened. Mm between the two gentlemen that I don't think many of us know. Mm. And the conversation that they're going to have, again, is just going to be the, between the two of them. And they're going to sort that issue out. And But what I do know, and as I said, we are a very calculated community, both Rigadi Gashagwa and Uhuru Kenyatta know that the community expects them to sort themselves out. Let me ask this question. When we talk of community, every community has brokers. People who 
are known to be able to bring parties that don't see eye to eye together. So are we saying that the deputy president is the one who is spearheading this, or are there people within the community who are respected and listened to? Because it's not just these two individuals who are listened to. There are many yes. others who are listened to and who, when they say something, who, who can even summon this very yes. Uru and Uru will likely In go fact, and see if them. if you remember what yes. Rigadi Gashawa said when he began this conversation, mm. he said, I have been talked to. Mm. I have been visited by Wazes, by religious leaders, by so and so, and they have told me they want the community to come together. So this is, and, that, and uh, even as he says this, as people sit and say they're not sure. I mean, I, I, I've been hearing some voices say, "No, who shouldn't agree?" Blah 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 blah. I'm like, but it's not his choice. The minute you become a political leader of a community, you then have. It is going to happen. Even for people like myself who are former members of parliament, there are moments and you get called and you're told, boss, we want this to happen. Mm. Why? Because, see, we gave you the responsibility. At some point, we gave you the trust yeah. of leading us. Now, this is no longer about you. It is about us. That's going to happen to Uhuru Kenyatta, whether he likes it or not. Mm -hmm. It's going. It's happened. It's already happened to Rigadi Gashago. I mean, I don't know why we are not, we are not asking ourselves how difficult it must have been a decision. For Rigadi Gashawa to actually go in public and say, I'm going to reach out to Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. I, I suspect it wasn't easy. But you can imagine the pressure that had come on him. People are assuming that pressure must be coming from outside. Oh, he's feeling like he's going to get isolated. He needs the, the warmth of the community. But I suspect that pressure is coming from inside. Okay. Is that external pressure also playing a part? The feeling of political isolation. The fear, not feeling. The mm -hmm. fear of political isolation for Rigadi Gashago as an individual. Yes. And then for those who are around him, feeling that politically, you know, by the time we get to 2027, eh, this game might change. I think so we need leverage by saying that we are speaking in one voice. I don't even think uh, Rigadi ever pretends about it. I think one of the, as he keeps saying, he's an honest man. One of the things he keeps saying, he's mm. very clear mm. in his head that, look, uh, the reason we are in this government is because, actually, I think for regard, he's, he's very clear. The reason I am deputy president in this government is because I mobilized and I got three million uh, votes from Mount Kenya region. Mm. Right? That's the reason I am deputy president in this government. The reason I will stay as deputy president in this government is to keep that vote mm -hmm. intact. intact behind William Ruto. The reason I might have a future in any other office is to keep this vote in my pocket figuratively and then start reaching out to other people. So I, I hear people saying, oh, but he knew he needs to become a national leader. He needs to start talking to other people. The first thing he needs to do is consolidate Have power. Mount Kenya region behind him. Same thing is going to apply to Musali Mudavadi. If Musali Mudavadi is not able to convince Western Bloc mm. to stand behind right. William Ruto, he will not be a prime cabinet secretary in the next By government. The way, this is all under the assumption that the people on the ground actually do want to coalesce against um, yes. around, uh, around Rigadi Kashagwa. Actually, it's the other way around. Mm. Rigadi Kashagwa's primary responsibility is to find the issues that the people in the region want to coalesce around mm. and become a champion to them. That's how it works. In politics, you don't go and ask people to follow you. You ask people to follow a cause that you're championing. So you have the responsibility of finding the cause. We didn't follow Uhuru Kenyatta for the sake of it. Okay. Mm. Good Uhuru went and found a cause. How is that working out so far? Actually, he's got, it, he's got a couple of things that are working for him because first, he's been able to identify the things when he also came up with his three things. Those ones, whether you liked him or not. In fact, there's a friend of mine who... Which one? Kahawa? Kahawa, Kahawa Majani, he's given and Milk. Given up. He's told <laughs> he hasn't Kahawa, given up. Cartel. No, he's, he hasn't given up. He's just saying, man, this one, this one is much harder than I thought. Okay. He's done the milk. He's, done the, he's doing the milk. And he's tea. done the tea. Now, you see, he's there's a friend it. of mine. He's doing it. I mean, at least a tea. My dad is a tea farmer. And this year, he's looking very happy. And the bonus this year is looking a lot better but than the last. But is it him who's doing it? I mean, the, 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 <laughs> see now, the yes. problem is, this is the reality of how government works. Mm. <laughs> when it rains. The government has brought the rain. And we <laughs> have a good harvest. It's a government. <laughs> so, really, when all is said and so done. When there's drought, yes, government. When it's and because when it's drought, yes, it's, it's the government. government. We are complaining that guys are dying of drought. What do we expect the government to do? So when it rains, why shouldn't we give credit to the government? If we are blaming oh, yeah. them for the drought. Oh, wow. okay. I mean, if you're going to blame them for the drought, yeah. reality, in, mm. real, in reality, politically, if you're going to blame government for the drought. So what Rigadi has done, what I was, the point I was trying to make is, what he's done is identified the, the issues that are important to the region. And I, I was using a friend of mine who was very asimilated, very, mm. but he's a coffee farmer. 
And the minute you decide talking about coffee, the girl's like, you know what? Maybe there's hope for this guy. And that's it. That's how you get people to come behind you. You don't ask them to follow you for the sake of you. You ask them to follow you because you're in a position where you can actually champion and deliver for things you, that are important. You know, you know, I come from a region where I would argue our value system is slightly different. Because if you are to ask how it is, Raila Odinga has remained at the helm of the Lua Nation. So, this thing that you are speaking of... At the, at the issues, at the coalition... Yeah, this the one issue. which you're saying, which one is it exactly? But you see, Raila has done the same thing. Mm. And he's been able to make the point to the community that the day I become president, I will solve all the issues that are important to you. I will mainstream fish as an economic conversation. I will make sure we stop being marginalized. So he's become the representation... The of the of the issues and the grievances the Lua community the oppression and and by, by the way one of the one of the worst things that could happen mm. was for Ella to actually become president because i suspect that he would actually disappoint the Lua community very because he's not going to be able to do exactly what they expect him to do but for as long as he's not he's their champion because he has not been proven as being unable to deliver on those promises you know where i'm going with this huh? again with the same Raila. I don't think it can be pleasant for you to be arrested in the middle of the night in front of your family. But what when you are detained for, what, eight years? Nine. By someone, nine? And you still end up chatting with this person and even being in the same government. Yep. See, we are discussing politics here. Yes. Not a church election, which in this country is really very political. Very mm. point. Actually, but, you know, maybe even worse. Political. Sometimes even worse. Ask, right. me, ask me, my dad is a retired cl uh, clutch. Yes. Yeah. All I'm saying is, when you look at the realities of our politics, what Rigada is doing is what he ought to do. Okay. Yes. Because even if he didn't want to, the moment you're deputy president come from that region, people expect yes. you to deliver certain yes. things. Yes. But it isn't the delivery. Is he in the process of this delivery actually uniting the people? Because you're talking about the communists and speaking of one voice. Mm. Is he actually doing it? Actually, he is. In fact, the, the most brilliant thing he did was reach out to Uhuru Kenyatta. Because, the, because to the common... You know, in Mount Kenya, at this moment in time, we have two camps. We have a camp mm -hmm. for, Uhuru, for Uhuru. And then now we have a camp that not so necessarily for Rigadi, it's for Kenya Kwanzaa which Rigadi is becoming the champion of. Mm -hmm. Now, once you have championed the Kenya Kwanzaa camp and become that, because right now, anybody in Kenya Kwanzaa has to accept that Rigadi is a senior. Mm -hmm. The Uhuru people have been refusing. Mm -hmm. People have been saying, no, Rigadi yeah, is not a senior. Really. This is not your Uhuru. Mm -hmm. So now what Rigadi has done, by reaching out to Uhuru, he now, the Uhuru people can't fight him anymore mm -hmm. because you are recognizing our guy is also a serious guy. Mm. Now, when the two of them meet, one of the things that is most probably going to happen because you have to remember who is also a politician. Right? Yeah. He is most probably going to, he understands what Rigadi is doing. He might not like it, but he has to understand it. Mm. So one of the things he's most probably going to do is add, invest into the perception that, you know, guys, okay, this is the, this is mm. the guy. Mm. Right? He, he just has to. Because if he doesn't, then it's not going to start looking like him. In fact, what what, what, uh, if? what the deputy has done, actually, uh. is put Uhuru in a very difficult position. Really? Because if Uhuru now refuses, because the deputy president has gone in public and said, I, in fact, with a lot of humility, I recognize a, a son of the, our soil, a mm. son of our region, mm. the former president, who first and foremost have given instructions to all our people to mm. stop throwing to stop throwing stones at him. <laughs> And I will personally reach out to him and figure out how to work together. For what the if Uhuru of just comes and says, nilikuwa ni mm -hmm. Yes. And says, you see, I told you guys, this is the wrong guy. <laughs> now he's trying to reach out to me. I told you it he's will the wrong guy. It will backfire on him very badly. Because unfortunately, yeah. it, 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 will it, on it will backfire, backfire on for Uhuru. somebody else. This one. No, it can't. Because no. uh, uh -huh. Rigadi is already the deputy president. This is no longer a competition. He is already deputy president, and he will be deputy president, God but, willing, for the next four years. But you know, this is your interpretation. He can become inconsequential yes, yes. in just about four years' time. Exactly. But possible. at this moment in time, and Uhuru can just say, "Yeah." But you see, as you see, I cannot. I told you guys, this guy is leading us in the wrong direction. Yeah. You see, now he's been going in the wrong direction. All of you have told him, "Come and talk to me." me. He is not talking to, to coming to me with saying, "I accept. I went. I'm leading you in the wrong direction." I am reminding you, you people. Yeah, I told you, you. Guys, 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 let's be honest here. Mm. Do you actually see Uhuru Kenyatta doing something like that? Why not? Uhuru. Yes. Why not? Why not? Because 
you he will have iso completely how isolated many, himself how many times did who warn people and say yeah. but, but he was warning them but he was warning them it's it's the same thing with Dirk but Ngujiri what does who have to lose no, he has a lot to lose how? he has the respect of the community to lose to lose really because 87% of this community chose the side Rigathi was on you know something you've been a politician you you've been a politician for a long time <laughs> to Malize <laughs> Twatch up. Twatch up. Mm. It is a look this one is for a look and see. Yeah, this is a looking thing. It's a looking, it's a looking thing. thing. It's a looking thing. <laughs> yeah. The way is Gujiri always a pleasure having in the studio. It's been great. It's been great. Sana. Santeni sana. Gujiri Mbogo is a former member of parliament for Nyeri Town constituency and is still a political player. You're looking to come back in one way or another. Tunuza chai na mandazi. Sai sai. Sai yeye ni cartel. Yeah yeah. Good morning. <laughs> I am Spice up your life Good morning this is Nizoam Dennis Aseto The Public Debt and Privatization Committee has raised a red flag of a loan secured by the government and whose details remain unknown warning that they risk exposing the country to huge penalties The report bold in the National Assembly revealed that between May last year and April this year Kenya procured 19 external financed loans from international creditors amounting to 213.24 billion shillings of which less than 11% had been disbursed The committee in its report noted that six loans were taken between May and August last year amounting to 105.06 billion shillings eight loans valued at 43.38 billion shillings taken between September and December last year while additional five loans valued at 64.8 billion shillings were procured between January and April this year The Ministry of Education will now be pushed to revise the capitation of primary schools upwards following a resolution by the National Assembly seeking to increase the capitation per pupil to cater for school feeding programs. In the motion proposed by Gatanga MP Edward Murio, which was passed by legislators, he argued that the current capitation is inadequate, violates the provision of Article 27 of the Constitution, and slows down the attainment of universal basic education in Kenya. The resolution of the House seeks to increase the allocation per student. from 1420 shillings per year to at least 7760 shillings per year to factor in the new CBC education system and the prevailing high cost of living the motion has given authority to the national government constituency development fund board to extend support to learners in primary and junior secondary schools to cater for competency based curriculum requirements Baringo has launched a 10-year county special program aimed at achieving amongst others a food secure and environmentally sustainable society. Speaking when he presided over the official launch of 2020-2030 plan at the governor's office grounds in Kabarna town, Governor Benjamin Chiboy said the program will help a great deal to plan for residents in all the seven sub-counties where families are dependent on relief food supplies. Chiboy noted that in the past, the county which has a population of close to 700 thousand lacked a sustainable strategy to support and empower residents economically the county boss said the region has immense agricultural potential which if properly tapped is able to not only feed the nation but beyond Now farmers across Embu County who lost their crops, livestock and pasture following desert locust invasion 4 years ago have received in 1.3 million shillings as compensation from World Bank. The funds channeled through Government Emergency Locust Response Program is said to benefit 120 farmers groups affected by invasion of various swamps leading to loss of livelihoods. The groups spread across nine wards received compensation for various value chains including dairy goods, rearing, poultry, beekeeping fodder and crops such as maize green grams and cowpeas speaking while handing over the checks to beneficiaries at talent academy grounds in embu town governor cecil mbadiri said the initiative aims at assisting farmers get back on their feet following the losses occasioned by the locust invasion
and police seized 240 cartons of suspected counterfeit alcohol and Kenya revenue stamps after raiding a rented house in Gurubani town, where is sub county, Kirinyaka County. The operation was carried out by police officers from Manguru Police Station after the they were tipped off by a member of the public, according to Kirinyaga Police Commander Ruben Muli. During the raid, 260 litres of ethanol stored in 13 jerry cans, two pressing machines, a roll of carrier stickers, 5,956 bottles, and three bags of assorted bottles were seized. The police commander issued a stern warning to those who convert residential houses into dens of lethal liquor. Now, the International Community Committee rather, of the Red Cross is in contact with Hamas and Israel to try to negotiate the release of hostages taken into Gaza. At least 150 Israelis and foreigners, including soldiers, civilians, children and women, have been held hostage in the Gaza Strip since Hamas' surprise Saturday attack on Israel. Hostage taking is forbidden under the international humanitarian law and anyone detained must be released immediately. The ICRC urged both sides to reduce the suffering of civilians. This is Russian President Vladimir Putin has called for negotiations between Israeli and Palestinian forces and hoped the war would not expand. Thousands have died over the last five days after Hamas fighters launched an unprecedented assault on Israel which responded with a massive bombardment of the Gaza Strip which Hamas rules parties and need to return to negotiation process that should be acceptable to all sides including the Palestinians. This is according to Russian President Vladimir Putin. This is Newsweb. Dennis, I said a good morning. Ninety four point four Spice FM, Nairobi. Okay, so not too badly today. It's um, not looked too uh, jam-packed in some parts. We're looking at still a little bit of traffic left on the thicker superhighway. We'll be able to get through that survey um, area. And then coming in from the... Uh, from Kiambu Road is still heavy and uh, looks like we might be here for a while. Uh, you're coming off United Nations Avenue in from Village Market on Tulimuru Road in from Uthaiga as well. That's still pretty heavy. On the eastern side of the city that doesn't look too bad right now. I think we'll be fine. Um, Cabana's going towards North Airport Road and then out towards the Ruai Junction. That is doing pretty well right now. So we're going to keep an eye on, on things, see how they um, happen closer to the end of traffic hour. We'll talk on Spice FM, KE on X. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, Wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room, the only way to... This is Kenya's biggest conversation. This is the Situation Room. We are on to the final hour of the show this morning. Thank you very much for keeping it locked. We are reminding you about Maisha Magic Plus, which has very, very good, very good local productions. One of them premiered on Monday. It's called Kasiri. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. on Maisha Magic Plus. You watch Kasiri. Everybody mind City, what Kasiri is about. Kasiri mm. is a program about... Okay, now. Um, guys are out of character. Mm. So, okay, there's a guy. Mm. And he's managed to get two girls to fall in love with, with him. All right? He's even gotten one of them pregnant. And he goes to ask the other one for money to go and take the pregnant girl to hospital. Are you seeing now how that can be a thing? Yes. Okay. Now, what you need to do to get the rest of the story is tune in to catch this drama series on Maisha Magic Plus on channel DSTV channel 163 or Go TV 3. So, it's 7.30 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Sounds like drama, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, because Wednesday. it is drama. Mm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. A guy falls in love a with two girls. A guy falls in love with two women. Okay. 
I think there's new? even a song like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they're one of them gets pregnant. They're called the Lost Boys. They're Lost Boys, exactly. I'm gonna mix them in love with two women. So. One gets pregnant. Mm. Oga now goes to the other one and says, I beg, sister, understand now. I have an emergency. Mm. Chick yes. says, okay, how? what's it? Money yeah. I bring. Money is for what? Is to go and help the other auntie who is in hospital about to deliver baby. Okay. He doesn't have money. Do you understand? Kasi. Mm-hmm. Ray. Kasi, Ray. So this is the beauty of these things. <laughs> Getting pregnant doesn't require money. But bring up but a child. The th- afterwards, that's the problem. What? What? Another one premieres on the twenty third of this month. It's called Zari. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, they say a lie gets halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to put on its shoes. Okay. Now, imagine a guy in your arms is dying. He has died accidentally, and you have to find a way to get rid of the corpse. Many questions popping off. Should be an accident. Just call the police. Why do you have to now start thinking about getting rid of the corpse anyway? You decide to do what? Dies in your hands. Accidentally. Accidentally. Something happened, and you don't know how to now try to explain this. Yeah. So you say, ah, behind my door here, there's what? There's a cup. Let me throw him. Bury in there. him in your backyard. Mm-hmm. Then, while you are Shakti. burying him in your backyard. <coughs> mm. <laughs> Somebody walks in on you mm-hmm. as per when you're doing the deed. Mm. Somebody walks in on you mm. and you have to now tell them mm. a story about exactly what is going on. Where do you start? And you convince them not to tell somebody else. Mm. Shh. What you've seen today here, let's just keep it between you and me. Huh. Can you convince them to keep it a secret? How Let's see if they can keep really. it a secret. Questions abound. Indeed. Mm-hmm. How big is your backyard? That's one what? of the questions. <laughs> How deep is your septic? <laughs> no, the key thing is uh, <laughs> live in a place with no backyard. Mm. No, this one has to have a backyard because that's where people found you burying the guy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, for the story to, f- to story. <laughs> the story to story, yeah. has to be a backyard. Uh-huh. It has to be a backyard yeah. somewhere. Something uh-huh. like that. Uh-huh. Okay, watch this new show. It will be premiering on the 23rd of October. <coughs> it will be showing at 8.30 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Every single weekday, 8.30 p.m. Dial star 423 hash or download my DSTV or my GoTV app to get or to stay connected. You watch the shows on my Shamajik Plus mm. DSTV channel 163 or GoTV channel 3. Thank you buy you. Very good. So we're going to be joined shortly by the senator for Kebu County. And the senator for Kebu County is called who? Karongo. Karongo. Karongo Wadangwa. Sindio? Hiya. And uh, as, as he comes, there's this whole issue of Kenyatta University. It was in the papers. It's in a big story. Kenyatta University and uh, some campuses that it bought in Kigali. Kigali is in which country? Rwanda. Rwanda. And Arusha is in which country? Tanzania. Tanzania. A probe into the closure of KU campuses exposed the rift between the former Vice Chancellor Olive Mugenda and the current Vice Chancellor Professor Paul Wainaina. The university administrators tore into each other on who's supposed to carry the blame for the closure of Kigali and Arusha campuses that led to the government losing hundreds of millions in the process. Former education CS Fred Matiangi also in the mix. Hard pressed to explain his role in the closure, but VC Paul Wainaina and former VC Olive Muganda tore into each other. The Investment and Governance Committee, chaired by Bumula MP Jack Wamboka, questioned why the government allowed the university to lose the huge money through purchase and establishment of Kenyatta University campuses in Kigali, Rwanda, and in Arusha, Tanzania. Documents re- revealed that the university spent 518 million shillings to set up the two satellite campuses, 420 spent in establishing Kigali. 97 Arusha. Another 90 spent on salaries, rental operations, maintenance expenses. However, the two campuses were closed due to operational challenges apparently imposed by change in legislation by Rwanda and Tanzania. So close to 0.6 billion shillings was lost and one year later before it started it was folded, meaning the government doesn't have a policy or they're not operating. It's a big one. This one Watch how it unfolds. It's a big one. Let me, I'm just telling you, it's, it's a looking thing. <laughs> Watch how it unfolds. Our guest is in the studio, the Honorable Senator for Kembu County, 
calls himself the magical senator. Miracle. The miracle. It's miracle, not mag- ma- magical. <laughs> no, I'm also magical. magical. <laughs> oh, what? The miracle senator. <laughs> Have them both. <laughs> Karungo Adango. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Du and CT. Good morning, nice brother. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. I'm always happy to be here. Karibu Tena. You know, they're on a show that is serious in Nairobi, you know, mm. tackling issues mm. without being personal. Mm. Yes. Na hiyo jacket yako, my friend. Yeah. Imeenda school. Mimi nilipewa VAT. Jacket hii. Hata import declaration levy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tutajenga manyumba. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tumetenga. <laughs> Tutajenga. Well, yeah. Thank City has much. the day's proverb. Today's I, proverb is from Tanzania. Yes. Mm. The bitterness of a son is known by the parents. Mm. Yes. Senator, what's your interpretation of that? The bitterness of a son is known by a parent. So, you're talking about son, S-U-N, son, <laughs> S-O-N. <laughs> Very good. Son, S-O-N. Uh, son, S-O-N. Mm. Okay. Uh, I think um, my interpretation is that it's only the mother who understands his children. Mm-hmm. So now that is direct interpretation mm-hmm. and uh, when you now put it into the literal uh, literal um, meaning mm-hmm. is that uh, only those who are affected by a certain problem understand it's better my thinking mm. okay you think it is good yes mm-hmm. we are aligned to your thinking very good mm-hmm. very right. good only those who are affected by the problem. The wearer of the shoe. Yes. Those were pinches. Those were pinches. pinches. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Karibu. That's Karibu. Idea. Now, there's a bill, this is an idea that you came up with and said, you know, I'd like to propose some amendment to the law. Yes. And you even went onto social media and said, you know, people, I have listened to people and this is the thinking. And you came up with an amendment. The public holidays amendment bill 2023. Uh, in which you are seeking some certain things. Yes. And I was telling Undu earlier. Yeah. We had just the other day. Mm. Moi day is now called what? Utamaduni day. Utamaduni day mm. was on Tuesday. Yes. Sunday is a weekend. Monday is a working day. Tuesday is a holiday. Yeah. Wednesday is a working day. Now, according to the senator, mm. you know, if we just look at reality, yes, <laughs> practically, yeah. Were people productive on Monday? Knowing they've come from Sunday and they're going back to Tuesday or holiday. <laughs> Maybe not. How about you just say, you know what? Eh? So this Monday in between, if the holiday cannot move to Monday, let the people move the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> or add to the add, holiday. Add, 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 to the, add, add the the holiday. holiday. Add holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, just tell us, yeah. what is the import of you? What, what are you? What's the thinking behind your bill? Um... You know, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me here. And I don't know whether we should just go straight to the bill. Mm. Uh, or maybe I should just highlight of what other bills I'm working on. Because, you know, sometimes mm. people, will, uh, uh, people will just say, out of all the problems that we have, this we young man is just telling us to rest. Mm. But anyway, I think you give me an opportunity to highlight other bills that yes. I'm coming up with. Yes. Um, but um, just to give you an example, that example you have just used, on Tuesday was a holiday. It is Utamaduni Day. Utamaduni is all about culture. Mm-hmm. You know, enjoying our traditions, getting to know our roots, and also understanding, you know, there is a lot of intermarriages that are happening. You want to understand the culture of your husband or your spouse, if I can uh, use that term. Mm-hmm. But that's why we have that day, so that we can bring about the unity, you know, cohesiveness, you know, so that we understand each other. Celebrate our diversity. Celebrate our diversity. But it was celebrated on Tuesday. Assuming my law was into, uh, what was was already approved, Mm. the counties could have used this opportunity to have cultural festivals. For example, Tukana will have its cultural festival, Narok will do the same, Mombasa will do the same. But if they do it for just a day, believe you me, nobody will travel to Mombasa for just a day. Mm. Nobody will travel to Turkana for just a day. Mm. You need time to travel. And you know, uh, um, uh, you know, some people are saying we do not have money to travel. Of course you don't. Mm. But you see, there are those who do, 
who would want to grow this economy of ours mm. by doing so. You know, we send our CSAs abroad to go and bring the tourists to this country. We don't say, in that country, people are poor, they can't come. Mm. We are inviting those who are okay. able to mm. come. Mm. Okay, so when I say that I want to extend, not really to extend this holiday, mm. but I'm bringing about holiday economics. Because you see, on Monday, and I'm telling you this for sure if you can do your own research, mm. government offices, maybe 90%, uh, were not operational the way they should be operational. Mm. Um, people in the office are not very productive because you're waiting for tomorrow. You know, mm. people at that particular day, that Monday, our parents died in quotes. Our relatives died. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that people say, my cousin is dead. I have to go for the funeral. You lie into your workplace mm. because you want to connect Monday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday to Tuesday. Monday, because you want to do something. Mm. Now, all I'm trying to do is to make sure that I bridge that gap uh, 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 of, of, you know, uh, and production mm. uh, or, uh, when, when, when people are working. So my suggestion was that if a holiday happens to be on a Tuesday, remember you only have Monday here. Yeah. So the preceding, preceding day, which is a Monday, mm. becomes a holiday. Okay. If it happens on a Thursday, the succeeding day, which Friday. happens to be a Friday, becomes a holiday. Mm. Why am I saying that? First of all, this is not a new phenomenon. Maybe in Africa, yes. Mm. But in countries like uh, uh, Philippines, mm. they do the same. They actually call it uh, holiday economics. Mm. In countries like China, where I have worked myself for three years, mm. uh, their New Year, they celebrate for a whole week. Their national holiday, which happens on uh, 1st of October, they celebrate for 10 days. Their Labor Day, the one that we celebrate mm. here, just a Labor Day one day, mm. they celebrate it for 10 days. Mm. Why is that? Because, you know, you work from, uh, like yourself, you work from very early in the morning, mm. maybe eight hours, just to rest four. You work for six days, just to rest one. Mm. I mean, did you come to this world just, to, just work to work? And not rest. And not rest. And you don't have enough time for your family. That's why we have mental cases all over. You know, because mm. you're here at work, you do not have time to bond with your children. Mm. You do not have time to bond with your parents. When is the last time you, 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 you went to see your parents up country? Mm. How long do you spend with them? You just get in there, talk to them a few when you're standing, leaning on your car, and then I'm so late, I'm going to go back home. So what you're trying to say, we are going to inculcate a culture of we need time, just like Easter. Mm. What happens during Easter? You know, people are saying that economically it cannot work. Hustlers need to work. Mm. Hustlers work on holiday. So we're actually giving them an opportunity uh, 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 to get more opportunities. Because if Eric or maybe CT uh, even do, you have a house that you're building mm. up country. On Those, a public holiday, you are there supervising the You jungle. supervise. <laughs> and, when, and, 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 when you go, and when you go there, economically, you are going to spend there. I'm bringing money close to the hustlers, mm. you know. And, and, and <laughs> Eric, look at it this way. COVID, we stayed home for two years. You know, work is overrated sometimes. <laughs> it is. <laughs> We stayed home for two years. Even people say drivers were working from home. Mm. But what I'm trying to say so, is that... So, so, so if, if I just see the sense, mm. and so far what, how you've explained it, it makes sense. If, I, it, if it falls on a Tuesday, the preceding day also becomes a holiday. If it falls on a Thursday, the succeeding day also becomes a holiday. Yes. Sour. Right. Wednesday. It's mm. the middle of the week. It's disruptive. Yes. Yeah. Do you have a solution? I, 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 I looked into that, mm. but I couldn't. I couldn't Could really. Come up with a I couldn't. I couldn't have you know, a solution for a, that. So if it comes on Friday, move it to fr on Wednesday. <laughs> move it to Friday or something. I, I couldn't uh, because <laughs> I, I I don't know whether you're trying to tell me now or to say it, Monday and Tuesday. Move it to <laughs> <laughs> Monday and Tuesday because no 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 no. Man, uh, Wednesdays stays Wednesdays because at least you have two days. Here, Saturday days stays there. Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday. But you see Sunday the way the Monday. act uh, is right now. Mm. Section 2 of the public uh, uh, holidays, I, I think it's section 4. Mm -hmm. It says that if a holiday falls on a Sunday, Monday becomes a holiday. Monday, Monday becomes a holiday. Yeah. You know, it's something that is already there. Yeah. For those who are saying that they love this nation, they want to work, how come they have never contested that? 
so that if it appears on on Sunday, mm. let it stay on Sunday. I want to work tomorrow. But we we have always agreed to that. Mm. But because it's a new idea, and of course we are Kenyans, we fight ideas that we have not come up with. Mm. You know, so 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 that's why sometimes somebody will not understand it. But in I'm trying to convince Kenyans because this will give us an opportunity. <coughs> and you know, I have done my math. If this law was a, it was effective from January 2023, it could have only affected three days. Three days this year. That is the Madaraka Day, which happened, I think, on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Then there's um, uh, uh, Maduni. Maduni Day. Mm -hmm. And I think 20th is on a Thursday, is it? Check your calendar so that we can talk about something. It's that, a Friday, uh, actually. No. 20th of... Uh, October. October. I have my calendar here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's on a Friday. Mm -hmm. I think 12th, Jamhuri Day. Jamhuri, Jamhuri Day, Day is on a Tuesday. So again, Monday. Because. Monday should have been, or oh, should should be a holiday. Mm. So only those three days. Only those three days. Next year, only two days. The other year, 2025, two uh, two days. 2026, only one day. Okay. You know, it, it, it is not that something that is affecting uh, uh, so many days. And we have had um, conversations with employers. So you're saying you've done your math. Yes. So it's only those three days. Now show me the math, the mathematical benefit to the social welfare of the of the people okay. to the economy have you done the math on that yes I, I have done that first of all the economic boost all right this is by people traveling or the matatus you know mm. you know people will be traveling around that time mm. uh, the hospitality industry the hotels mm -hmm. there will be activities because you have enough time you create us a, a festival an event in your area this is when people will be taking opportunities to do their home gatherings i mean there will be circulation of uh, uh, money wherever people are going to have these events uh, today they are not able to do that because probably they, are, they, they we do not have such second we are promoting domestic tourism. Mm. You know, in places like China, they do not require foreigners to come and visit their country. Why? Because they receive more money from domestic tourism. People travel. This is what we want so that we understand. It was my first time to go to Migori the other day. Mm. I accompanied the president, a person of my uh, uh, stature, if I can say that, mm. and age is the first time I'm visiting Migori. Mm. The first time I'm visiting Turkana. Turkana, I have seen it since I was, I think, uh, in class one mm. by, you know, the drawing map. the map of Kenya. Mm. You know, the lake that looks like a sock, mm. you know. I have been doing that all through, but I've never gone there. Mm. Although I didn't even get opportunity to go there because we were there for work. Mm. I, I still now want to plan and go to Turkana so that I can do that. To the lake, do that. Mm. To the lake Turkana now. County. Yes. Mm. So, you see, people don't travel. And that's why there is infighting, because we do not understand our cultures. You know, I could see beautiful counties, Homa Bay, because, you know, we flew over Homa Bay, Migori, and Kisumu. Those, country, those counties are rich in productivity. They have sugar, they have tobacco, they have rice, they have water. But you see, all we know about these counties is what we see on TV when it comes to mandamano, when it comes to other activities. So even when you're going there, you're very cautious. And I'm telling you this without contradiction. I am the chairman of the Roads, Transportation, and Housing Committee at the Senate. Mm. We wanted to go to Homa Bay because uh, we have budgeted for them to have a ferry, mm. a ferry that will be going from Homa Bay, uh, from Bita uh, to Homa Bay. Mm. Uh, that ferry is costing about 600 million. We budgeted for that through a petition that was brought by somebody from uh, Homa Bay. Mm -hmm. But when we were planning to go there, we were told you cannot go. Why? Because it is, the, the environment is not as good because of Mandamano. You know? So we have cancelled that trip again and again and again and again. So, but when I went there, I was like, these are the people I was told they, 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 they are violent. Mm. They are not. You know, we were drinking, eating with them and telling jokes. I mean, it is normal. I mean, so by having an opportunity for our children even to go exchange programs, you know, if you look at this uh, uh, project as a bigger picture, not as a mere of now. It's a holiday. It's just a holiday. And those who are complaining, by the way, they don't have work. They're on holiday 365. 
you know those who are complaining una, unataka twende holiday tufanye nini na hatuna kazi yes already you're on holiday I'm, i'm trying to get those who are working to have an opportunity to come and interact with you mm. so that you understand what they do mm. so that you understand their work mm. uh, uh, so that is one of the things the other issue is um, employee you know the employee of the day the other day you had the head of public service felix uh, saying that uh, nobody should uh, compensate I don't know what the term he used that your leave days you should not sell your leave days mm. to the government mm. you have to take leave mm. why because he's realized people you want to work so that you get money but you forget yourself mm. your own people are not resting yes people are not resting and good work ethics is equal to good rest ethics you know because you cannot work you remember uh, even when i was a broadcaster We used to be told take a leave you you're burned out you have no new ideas mm. you, you go home and rest we were telling do that yesterday mm. ah, she should mm. Mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know go go rest <laughs> you know so so uh, people are not uh, uh, resting mm. but resting increases the employee's morale you when you when you're at home you appreciate even your workplace you even think is that the best place that i should be you know you're given an opportunity to even interact with others and share what is your workplace and remember everybody is entitled for a leave day of 21 days in a year all right mm. somebody would argue then let me use my 21 days to go right. somewhere yeah. and and go and 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 and, and visit you but you see extras? turkana cannot uh, mm. create a music festival or a cultural festival for If you alone nobody comes okay <laughs> you know you cannot break. Yeah. we take a break yeah. yeah let's take a break just reminding the senator that over the weekend yes. there was the maral camel festival that is organized by those three counties turkana samburu and marsabit county Yes. It happens Buana. It's a whole But, but who went? It would Only the locals. It would happen better. It would happen better. Yes. That is what you say. Holiday. Yes. It would you, happen. You could have traveled. Okay. okay. You could have traveled, but you are doing a cultural show or event for the same people. I, I mean you are, you are you are showing in. them them I don't know how <laughs> you showing them yourself <laughs> showing, showing them themselves you know <laughs> half past nine, Kenya's biggest conversation is hosting Senator Karongo Adangwa the senator for Kembu County he has a bill that he's proposed and this is seeking to amend the it's called what holidays no, public holidays public act. holidays act yes. yes we'll talk about it more after this break good morning this is the situation room The only way to start your day. On your marks, get set. Kenya's largest single day athletics event is back again this year and it is bigger. Get ready for the 20th edition of the Standard Chartered Nairobi Marathon. Join us at the Uhuru Gardens on Sunday, 29th October as we celebrate 20 years running. Register today for 2000 shillings only at www.nairobimarathon.com. All proceeds go towards our Future Makers program which helps young people, especially girls and people living with disability to learn, earn and grow. Okay, so we're looking at just a little bit of traffic left coming in through towards Mothaiga Square and more or less diminished on the thicker superhighway uh, into the CBDs where you see the most of it at this hour. We're coming out of it and it's not been too difficult a morning. How about we keep it just so? Let's see what happens as we go through the morning. And you can talk to us on Spice FM KE on X. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings, done right. 94.4, Spice FM, Nairobi. See, Senator, yes. and maybe you can bring that in here, that um, the thought is that when a holiday comes about, obviously nobody's put up. It, it, when looking at a working nation, yes. that whether you're looking at industry, whether you're looking at government in the private sector, etc., that you lose a day when it comes to holiday. Mm. And this is not saying that necessarily you have to be productive all the time, yes. but that you lose a day. And so now here we are saying that we add another day by virtue of it's being preceded by a working day, that holiday, right? right. Um, many have complained 
a lot of times we've heard complaints, especially from um, f um, external parties coming into Kenya to work and say the number of holidays are just too much. What would be a counter to that in this proposal whereby we say, look, we're dipping in productivity because we've added another day, you know, to, to the holiday because it will come. That, that counter will come. You know, um, when we do, when we have holidays, mm. it is not... Uh, uh, we are shutting down the country. Mm. All I'm trying to say is that we reorganize the way we do things. Even during Christmas, Spice FM never goes off, mm. you know, mm. which is a holiday that is known all over. Mm. Uh, any other holiday, radio stations, TV stations, they are never shut down. What happens, you rearrange with your employees that I'm going to give these people an opportunity to go home this time, mm. then we will compensate you maybe the next week or during the new year. Mm -hmm. So, but that does not mean that uh, 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 we should not take these holidays just because maybe we are saying that we, we, we feel like we're shutting down the economy. Mm -hmm. No. What I'm trying to say is, let the holiday be there. Then institutions, government uh, offices, they reorganize themselves towards that holiday. You know? Mm -hmm. They can say, people will work half day on this day. Mm -hmm. All right, so that we give others an opportunity. Those who want to travel, maybe I don't want to travel. Maybe I just want to rest. Maybe I just want to rest. Yeah. I want to sleep, or maybe I just want to be in the office, uh, like Ndu. Mm. You, you were saying I want to be in the office. Mm. Uh, you know, I want to work. Mm. So you will tell her, uh, Eric and City, we want to travel. So you, you will leave you here, work. and and she will be okay. Mm. All right, that is uh, that is one of the the, the the things that we can do. Please don't Two. put ideas in these minds. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're already thinking. <laughs> Two, um, as I was saying, everybody is entitled to 21 days mm. leave. But uh, we don't take this leave all together at the same time. Mm. I come from a very big family. We are 13 in my family. And I'm number 13. So within this family, assume we are all working. And we want to have a family get together to go and see our sister somewhere in Malindi. Mm. You see, unless we go to each and every office, you go to your office, request for that time off, request for that time off, request for that time off, which is very rare for all of you that need to be given that opportunity to travel probably. Mm. But if there was a holiday like Easter, we plan, we know Easter is coming. This Easter is family get together, we are visiting one of us. Mm. Or we are visiting uh, our, our family or members or friends. Yeah. Okay, so these days should be there for planning purposes. You may not even utilize them. You know, uh, uh, the government office, you know what used to happen uh, in China where mm. I used to work as a radio presenter? We were told within these 10 days, record all your shows. Mm -hmm. So that means I will work extra hard within these five the days prior days. to. Mm. Mm. All right, I record all my shows, I plan them, and I put them there. You see, everything is running. Uh, when you are uh, somebody who can do your work prior to, you are given that opportunity. Mm. But if you are not, you are an essential worker. You are told you will work for five days, and you go for five days, then come back and replace this person. So it's all about, it's not a blanket like shut down the country, go back home. Mm. Yeah, make sure that no, there's, no, 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 no. there's continuity. They, yeah, we are just giving you that opportunity so that you know. Mm. Just imagine if the whole standard group understands or gets to know that 12th of Jamhuri, uh, Jamhuri Day will be a long holiday, assuming Monday will also be a holiday. Can you imagine the events that this station can organize mm. in different parts of the country? <laughs> Just imagine. <laughs> you know, marketing, the caravans. You know, there are so many things that can be done. But you see, uh, we only do things. Do you know, it's only government officials enjoy this country. <laughs> I want you to understand that. They're the only ones who They're take only leave. people who enjoy this country, who, who feel, who, you know, but the local one, actually, they don't. Why? Because government, when the president is uh, in uh, Migori for five days, you are with him. Offices are closed. Offices, everybody is there. I was there for three days, you see, for my first time. Mm. But when is that local person going to get that opportunity? Your employee cannot give you that. Uh, 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 you hear the president is coming to Migori. Uh, give me a leave for three days. I want to see what they're doing. Mm. Nobody will do that. We had a um, devolution conference in Eldoret for five days. What was it made for? Uh, what meant for? It was meant for Wanainchi. But did they come? No. Who has five days? 
So it is the same people, we the governors, the senators, uh, the MCAs, we and, are the same people. County workers. We come and sit together and we tell each other what we have been doing, mm. but not the, 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 the <laughs> citizens. But what if we had during that period, we make assuming there a, was a holiday, a holiday, we say devolution conference is here, there are going to be these activities, Kenyans come. I'm telling you, everybody will be in that particular but time. Now, all those things you're saying are not in this bill, Bona. No, no, no. Now, mine is to provide the day. What you do with it is up to you. Mm. How about, Senator, looking at the work hours in a week? And saying, because the whole issue here is, I, I, I get the thrust of very many things that you're saying, but I, I also hear this one of, it's important to rest. It's important for people to get rest time. It's important for people to get time to do other things outside of the employment or yes. what they do then why don't you regulate the work hours and say kenya shall move into a 20-hour working week actually that's where we're headed so that then that makes you gives you the rest of the hours no that, 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 that's okay <coughs> mm. but that's where we're headed after this one that's oh, that's what we, that's, that's the point. direction because even if you get two more hours you're not able to travel you're not able to go far from wherever you are. Mm. You only have time to do your hustles, another business, you go do accounting to your small business. That one you can do. There are some countries that they are now working from Monday to Thursday. France right? is one second. You see, France mm. is doing that. Mm. Uh, there are countries like Saudi, children go to school from uh, 7 a.m. Mm. to 12. Mm -hmm. They have free in the afternoon. Here, we have tried, but what have we tried? We have said no tuition. Instead of saying why we are banning tuition, why we are telling you not to do tuition, we say no tuition. So instead of telling parents, we want your child to rest, we want your child, whatever they learn from school is, important, is enough. Let the child play. But you say we ban tuition without giving an explanation. So people think this government does not want our children to learn. You heard the other day uh, the, the, um, the CS education mm. talks about when children should be going home. Mm talks about i think 3 p.m mm. they should be going home uh, from school so you from class what work class what mm. what you're trying to say is that if we are able uh, 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 to to come up with a nice structure of how we are going to take care of our people both mentally physically and well-being of the society yeah. because people are depressed you're depressed because you come from work where you have a very bad boss remember not all bosses are good <laughs> all right then when you go home you do not even have time to rest because your children there you have to do cbc with them you know you don't even have to time to unwind so then you sleep then in the morning the same boss again so what i'm trying to say is that um we need to look at the way we work as a nation we mm. open up our minds yeah there are many people online who are agreeing with the bill and saying this is a brilliant idea and there are those who are saying this is a useless idea of course. Robert Bogo, for yeah. example, is saying Kenyans have very many pressing cha challenges. You know, we have issues. Of all the issues that you could really hear Kenyans complaining, this is the one you picked as a pain point. You see, that was my starting point. Mm -hmm. That's why I told you, before we talk about holiday, yeah. can I first of all talk about other things that I'm doing? The reason why we're talking about <laughs> holiday mm. is because it is exciting. You know, it is a new idea. Mm. You know? So that's why even uh, I'm being invited here because of this uh, holiday bill. But I do have other bills that I will uh, enumerate. Uh, uh, I have them here. Mm -hmm. We are doing coffee bills. We have tea bill. We have sugar bill. We, today, we are going to pass the health bills. We have them. But you see, well, health is, is not a very interesting topic to discuss, okay? It is. So, no, no, no. I'm saying to okay. discuss. Okay. Uh, sensationally, you mm -hmm. know? Like the way this health. And that's why somebody will say, of all, this is mine. I brought you. You bring yours. You, you, you know, Kenyans. Kenya gives every citizen an opportunity to bring law mm -hmm. as long as it goes through their legislature. So if you have an idea, bring it to me. I, I will for sure uh, take it, take it uh, and take through. It forward. Yeah. Rather than just saying, you know, every law must be brought by somebody. Yeah. There's somebody who went to court about LGBTQ and all those issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot say of all things, that's whatever their interest, whatever uh, uh, there is. Mm -hmm. But to answer him, Bogo, I have an amendment of the PFM Act that is trying to reduce pending bills. Because the reason why we have pending bills, Eric, mm -hmm. if I can explain very fast, mm -hmm. is because... And I don't think so many people know this. The reason why we have pending bills is because counties or governors 
over project when they're making their budgets over project their own source revenue right okay mm -hmm. so for example i give you an example of kiambu mm. kiambu in the year 2022 2023 they had said we are going to collect 3 billion mm -hmm. 3 point something billion from own source revenue okay. that's what they said yes mm -hmm. but they collected 2.1 so what does that mean yeah, in their budget they were given permission to spend up to 3 billion mm. okay because you see what is in the budget is what you spend you give contracts there yeah. because you have a budget but when you collect 2.1 you have a deficit of 900 million so that pending be because you don't have money you have no money to pay i give you now this example this year mm. kiambu county in the year 2023 2024 despite not collecting 2 billion they have projected by miracle maybe mm. they are going to collect 7 billion oh, whoa, 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 whoa. that's it that's it okay mm -hmm. 7 billion so that means they are going to spend 7 billion but collect worth again 3 worth of their budget mm. but then collect about 3 so they leave for so pending bills will never end we'll so what am i bringing as an amendment mm. the amendment is we have to cap it that you have to go a certain percentage higher from your previous collection so if you collected 2.1 billion you go 20% higher mm. so kiambu should have only projected 2 billion and 200 million above mm. that that means you cannot uh, uh, use what you don't have mm. that is one law that is going to change this uh, <coughs> but you see again we are not discussing it i'm also discussing the term limits i have another amendment for the term limits of chief officers okay. chief officers are the little pss in the county if i can mm. say that mm. the, the pss in one. the county mm. yeah so so i want to give them term limit when a governor goes mm. he goes with his ceos okay because you don't want what's the current situation like the current you find them there you're stuck with it why you are stuck you're stuck are because they permanent and no 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 they were given contracts they have contracts they have contracts right. and every governor i mean by maybe default mm. they give them contract nobody no governor want to leave the ceos there mm. but the new governors when they come in like in the case of kiambu they need mm. a carry over it yeah. has kiambu government has not employed any ceo yep they are working with the previous one yeah. yep. and what is happening they are being told i am going to extend you one month so that you play along so with the governor. contract expired they just expired. before the new government came in yes and they they just keep renewing them by a month by a month so that they keep you there so because you don't want to lose your your job mm. you have to do what the governor is do is saying so i want to bring term limit so that when the governor comes you have to employ new ceos because you have the, just like the president president uh, takes the pss to the county assembly uh, to the national assembly the same same thing the county secretaries of course they have not said uh, the law does not say when that seat becomes vacant mm. you know the others say by death by resignation by what the county government is silent on that and that's why in kiambu county government we do not have a cs you know because who is the county secretary county secretary He's is head of public service in the county yes mm. and also he sits at the cabinet he is a secretary of the cabinet mm. So when you do not have a, 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 a county secretary that means that cabinet is unconstitutional. Mm. You know? So I I'm, I'm saying I also have an impeachment bill. Remember I went through the process. <laughs> <laughs> you were impeached. <laughs> no, I know I wasn't. Mm. <laughs> They uh, purported. Yes. Uh, I also have an impeachment bill. Reason I want just to make the process uh, cleaner. You know, I'm not saying people should not be removed from office, mm. but I don't want that to be used as a political kind of, you know, you you're settling scores. Mm. So, Weapon. and one of the issues is that I'm bringing that uh, impeachment bill. Mm. You know, when we a governor is impeached and brought to the Senate, there's a committee of 11 members mm. that is formed to investigate. And when this committee fi finds the governor guilty, mm. the matter is discussed by the Senate and they vote. But when this committee of 11 finds that the governor is not guilty that matter ends there. Yeah. I want to remove that. To say either the committee finds the governor guilty or not guilty the senate must discuss that and vote on that. So that this committee should work without any interference. You know mm. because if matter can a matter so can a report die report of the committee of the county assembly it must end up in no, the no no of, of, of the of the senate of the senate yes must end up in the plenary must end up in plenary okay even after you do the investigation if you say this governor 
Uh, found uh, nothing. Uh, found nothing. Mm. We have to scrutinize what you what you looked into and vote for that. That way, this committee will work without any intimidation. Because, you know, when you... When, what do when, you mean? You know, when, when, when you are 11 members, yeah. I mean, it, it is easy. Somebody can come in between and tell and do things that has happened before. Now, what are you trying to cure, practically? What I'm trying to cure... Like, from experience, what experience is this that um, you've seen in the Senate? Uh, what I'm trying to cure is that to remove pressure to this committee... Okay? Because this committee of 11 people, when you're even doing your work, you hide. Why? Because there are people who are looking for you. You know? What there are people, of, what sort of people? But for example, you know this committee must, uh, must uh, uh, what do you call it, must append their signatures to yeah. the report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the signatures must be uh, six plus, um, about six. Yeah. Because Quorum. five plus one. Mm. Okay? So that means if you don't have quorum, that report is not it's dead. It's dead. So you only need to get rid of three members or four members from the committee. You know? So we are trying to remove that pressure because there could be kidnapping, there could be we hide when you are writing the report. You are told you are not going home because we don't know whether you are coming back. You know what I mean? Eh. Yeah? Because, because, because it is, uh, I'm telling you, it's a serious, it's a serious It's thing. a high stakes game, basically. Yes. That's what we're when talking about. We were, when we were doing our report mm -hmm. in Kawera Mwangaza mm. issue, yeah. and I was a committee member. You were among the 11. Yes, among the 11. And we did our work, mm. of course, without any interference. Mm. But when we were signing, all of us had to be in the same hotel. There was a lot of security. And we left the hotel a few minutes to the Senate session. Mm. We had the, the, what do you call that? We had the security. Outriders. Outriders. Mm. You know, going with us all the way. And I was like, oh my God, this 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 this, this is not it. Because you don't want also now, now anything to happen uh, for these senators. But if they were just led to whatever they have to do, you know, either the report comes saying, governor to go, it must be scrutinized by the Senate. If the committee report says governor should stay, the same report must be scrutinized. So you leave it to the senators. You, you widen uh, uh, the scope mm. of whoever is going to have a say, rather than have only uh, 11 members to do the work of the Senate. You know, even if we are delegated, mm. even if we are an extension, you don't want to leave it uh, for, for only 11 people to execute what the whole Senate was supposed to do. It's interesting that some of these things that you're bringing up, I mean, we have to start from looking at what the Public Holidays Act says and some of these other, you know, amendments that you're seeking to bring in. You seem to be harping on the quality of a delivery as yeah. opposed to the length of time that you spend on it. So whether we're talking about an impeachment, how do we now ensure that it's not being used as a political weapon? When we're talking about public holidays, even if you're going to work for three days, can we then insist on the quality that you're delivering when you're in that uh, job position and saying, yes, there needs to be time to rest? When we're talking about, you know, pending bills, we're saying, look, for goodness sake, how can you say you will spend more than you actually have in your hand? If you look at an overarching principle, is that not what we should? We, I mean, I, I'm hoping that your mindset is now going towards the quality over the wasted time that we continue seeing um, happening, especially um, in government, especially at the legislature. Yeah, yeah we, we have that in mind. But you see, the law... Uh, once every law is passed, what follows is the cabinet secretary who is in charge of that law to come up with regulations. Mm. And now regulations, they prescribe now into details. Mm. You know, what should happen, at what time. They even talk about time. But the law is a structure to just create that framework uh, uh, to execute uh, 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 that idea mm. then that idea is broken down by regulation then after the the, the, the regulations uh, then the office they have to come up with their circulars and everything so because i'm just mentioning that mm. and you have talked about the duration of impeachment mm. it is also touched within the pending bill uh, within the amendment, amendment. Bill. Uh, actually it's a new law mm. within the bill mm. it is it is in there because again we want to remove the emotions Mm. You know, the impeachment, somebody just, uh, today, today happens, the emotions we want to just Give increase the time. duration a little bit. Yeah. Mm. So that at least, even the governor has time to reach out 
because it could be just political mm. you know what, what we are doing is that uh, i'm not removing the power of the county assembly i'm only enhancing it mm. by removing what i've experienced or what others have experienced on mm. what uh, the senate has experienced i have another law mm. okay that is anti-campaign lies law uh. <laughs> you know uh, yeah. anti-campaign campaign lies, lies. Okay. Wongo. Mm. lies law false promises not necessarily okay. false promises lies uh, lies against your opponents when you're running because if you lie about your opponent you are voted for under pretense oh like saying this person insulted women yes okay you know you have to prove that somebody can go to court and say prove it i said that i give you an example of kambo mm. in the year 2017 mm. when uh, governor kabogo was said to have insulted women yep. and everybody talked about that mm. but when you asked where where he said that nobody can prove but everybody knew that if this law was there he could have gone to court and bring the materials of his opponent saying this said this and this if you cannot prove that mm. then you are trying to lie to people all right but look at it this way senators is there's already a law on no no that is that is that is not as direct as that you know there's freedom of expression you know mm. they say that the 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 the, the election act mm. only deals with the procedures you know so there's defamation but you see you defamation defamation is a different character altogether it will take ages for you to prove you defamed somebody all right mm. but this, this one to you are specific yeah. to answer the election let me give you an example of a good friend of mine boni kalwale mm -hmm. uh, who is a senator of kakamega and my whip mm. and i'm giving this example because i want you to see what i mean okay before he joined president ruto in his campaign mm. he was on the other side mm. just check his videos before all right mm. check his videos before he joined the uda side when he was in odm mm. He used to call president is a thief. Mm. He used to say things that when you listen to them today, you don't understand. Mm. But you come to this side, all of a sudden you have forgotten the thief tag and everything that you had said. Mm. So that means you are lying to us for your own. All right. Mm. So if somebody would go and say, this guy, call me a thief. And he was voted for because he painted my name as a thief. To the voters you need to prove i am one so that when you're doing our campaign we sell our visions not necessarily mud slinging uh, uh, other other um, candidates other uh, candidates yeah. and you know it is not but, new but, it but has now, happened in the uk but now yes you're going to remove the fun from <laughs> no, no, no 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 you know that's why you know why do you know why women are afraid of what? Do you know why of women are afraid of, afraid of getting into okay. politics? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Because somebody will say, this one <laughs> slept one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, the they don't want their name. People say I'm really crazy. They, they, they say, so I also want to help women. Mm. So that by the time you say that, my friend, you have to prove, you have to bring all of us, all those men, you have to bring them to the court <laughs> and tell me one, two, three, four, five. So we are trying to clean up the way we do our politics. You're right. That is one. And the final one. Mm. is equitable distribution of development at the ward levels you know mcas have always been crying of a uh, ward fund mm. Mm. of course ward fund is not constitutional mm. but nothing stopped the governor from bringing equitable development to the ward by saying and that is what my law is saying 60 percent of the development monies in every county should be shared equally to every ward right 60 percent equal not equitable equally first of all equally that's okay. what i'm saying 60 okay equally to every ward so that every ward now with that money uh for example the the, the there are some counties that are doing that already mm. the county of was gishu the county of narok mm. narok every ward is getting 100 million mm. every ward they have 30 wards all right is getting 100 million that 100 million the citizens of that ward the residents of that ward will sit down with the mcas and everybody and say these are our priority projects 
We are an area where we need cattle dip, we do cattle dip. We need road, probably we don't need road for, the time, for this year, we need water. So that they use their money the way they want. Also this way, we remove the governors from, you know, uh, saying these are good MCA, a friend of mine, I'll do more projects mm. than these other who is asking me questions. Mm. So this law will tell every governor, 60 at least, we are not saying just 60, if at you can do 100, 60. Well and good. So but the other 40? Minimum. The other 40 is left now for the governor, the, the executive. executive, to do flagship projects. You know, major projects. Hospitals. You know, level fours. The stadia. Depending on the priority. Okay? Then so there's no point of having a CLDP. No, no, no. That will be put in the CIDP. The law is saying CIDP, yeah. everything that you're saying must, must be, be put in the CIDP. In the CIDP. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this process should begin way before mm. the, the, the So the, the, the residents of a ward come up with their own priorities. With their own. So and they also know that in the next five years we have five hundred million shillings, yes, for example, in they the can plan. Of, and you start planning. Right. We'll get you. So right. you have seen it's not just yeah, uh, holiday. It's not just holiday. <laughs> we are working. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Miracle Senator, for joining us. <laughs> Karongo Thangwa is the senator for Kembu County. He's been our guest this morning. Yes. Um some of these bills that he's proposing, they make sense. And um, even the one on public holidays, by the way, I see the sense. Mm. Personally, yes. I see the sense. Whether I agree with it or not is a different matter. It will now come after public participation. <laughs> right. <laughs> 10 a.m. Thank you very much for tuning in. Have a lovely day. See you tomorrow. Spice up your life. 